Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Game Face, episode three, four, five on Sifted Games at Sifted.net. We have a great show for you guys today. Two gigantic games, one of which just came out today, another one that came out on Friday. We got Apple's big headset that was just announced yesterday. The timing's working out great for this episode. Alongside me to discuss all these things is Matthew Kyle. What's up, Matt? No, yeah, well, not a lot. How's that hand feeling from all that Street Fighter? Uh, thumb sore. <laughs> I shouldn't be using a D-pad for that. I My hands are so out of shape. I hadn't even realized how long it had been since I had seriously played a fighting game. And my left hand is, like, killing me. Like, after the first day of really playing Street Fighter VI, I was like, I'm, a, I'm like, gamer out of shape. Like, mm-hmm. I found it very bizarre. I don't know if any of you guys are going through that right now with Street Fighter. But, like, it's, I, I play fighting games, but I'll play them for, like, you know, half a day. And I'm like, I get it. And, you know, that's enough to talk about it. Like, when you, I really dove into Street Fighter VI, I just haven't put my hands through this for a really long time. It's kind of mm-hmm. cool to have Nintendo thumb again. It's been cool. It's been a while since I've had it. Yeah, I got. I, I should switch to my stick, but I just I'm too lazy. Yeah, I don't have a stick. I wish I did. I do. I'm pretty sure the Street Fighter Five stick I had for PS4 works. Yeah. On this one, I just haven't. It's always hard it to tell whether like from one generation to another where all those peripherals I, I think will work the, or not. If I remember right, this one like the official stuff does for, at least from PlayStation. I don't know about Xbox. I have a, I have so many Xbox 360 like Mad Cat sticks just because. A, from, like, because I was much more into the Street Fighter 4, like, tournament scene, and B, because I was doing, like, um, product stuff on G4, and so I was doing stuff with Mad Cats and Hori, mm-hmm. and they would send me stuff all the time, and no one else in the, in the the on the team cared about any of that. So yeah. I have, like, so many weird fighting sticks just because of, of that deal. I have a, but you gave me, actually, a stick not that long ago. Um and it does not work on PlayStation 5. It didn't work on PlayStation 4 either. I think it was a PS3 stick or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that, that would track. I have a gorgeous Hori one that I don't think works anymore uh, on modern systems. It's like it's like a the Shadow Blade or something like that. Yeah. It's just this beautiful, like, bl- all black, shiny black with, like, blue LEDs. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's wonderful, but I don't think it works on modern systems anymore. Everything, in my opinion, from the PS4 era forward should work. You'd think so. I, I mean, mean, some, I mean some otherwise the, it's just greed. Some man. of the forward stuff is just because Mad Cats went out of business. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's sketch. And some of it's just, like, some of it is just, like, Sony or Microsoft not wanting to update that or wanted it. Some of that's not on the companies. Some yep. of it's on the the console manufacturer. But like, I, I I'm pretty sure the Street Fighter Five one works. Um, so I'm I'm gonna deal with that. It may eventually. be time for your boy Shane to just invest in an arcade stick. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm, I mean I have I have a ton of sticks, but I don't think I have any other than that Street Fighter Five one that would uh, update to a modern system. Like I don't think any of my other ones. I, I have them because like. I, I have know. sticks. They maybe, just don't work maybe anymore. Maybe one day I have a big Street Fighter 4 party on 360 <laughs> and we need a bunch of stuff. I don't know why I still have all those fucking things. I have lots of stuff like that yeah. where I'm like, maybe. So, and it's like, that never happens. It's, like it's never going to happen. It's like why I still have all my rock band shit. Yeah, I was like, maybe someday I'll have all the crew. We'll have a big old rock over. band party. <laughs> Never gonna happen. My downstairs neighbors, <laughs> your downstairs neighbors will love the drummer. Like, yeah, or I will love getting all the drum parts out of the closet that I had to yeah. stack in there all perfectly like Jenga to get it. The I fit. mean, I thought about it recently, and I started looking at like the prices of some of it because I have all of it. I uh-huh. just don't know where some of it is. And it's like maybe I just buy it instead that of digging fu- it up. That Rock Band like Xbox One co- like translator connector thing. Mm-hmm. That goes for like $400 Because it's the key. It's the thing you need. You yeah. have to have it, yep. So, Unbelievable. Yep. Anyway, I hope you guys have had a great week. I'm sure you guys have been playing these awesome games as well. Um, and then don't forget, Matt, that it's easy to forget that this is E3 week. Well, I mean, in another timeline. Right. But what I'm saying is like normally it this would have been like I was driving over here today and I realized that like my hype level is like down here. Because there's no E3. Like, normally right now, my heart and soul would start getting revved up and like, here we go, here comes E3. And now with this new thing that we got going on, it's like, eh. Like, it's easy to talk about E3 going away when it's not here. But then when the week comes where it's actually supposed to be there and you're just normal, like, it's hard to explain. I would never have known if you didn't say something. Oh, really? I don't, I cannot other than seeing all the people i want to see you know the people that don't yeah. come into town all at the same time otherwise like the packers party or like mm-hmm. various events but other than that 
like it will make zero difference to my day-to-day life i mean i'm i'm, a, I'm looking forward to the uh, xbox thing on the 11th like mm-hmm. aaron greenberg has been on, been on twitter going on it was like no see no all cg trailers we're gonna market me out like he seems pretty he's not doing the tempered expectations this time thing yeah. this time which is good and like it cannot be emphasized how much Starfield needs to blow the fucking doors off this thing. <laughs> it really like does. It re- apparently, yeah. we are going to see Fable. Apparently. Yeah, it looks like it. Yep. So, and you see the, the Everwild update? No. First time in years. No. Somebody updated. Uh, I mean, it was like more of a thing someone heard talking to a rare person recently, but it, I can't remember who it was, unfortunately. But they said that the closest comparison is Viva Pinata. Oh. That it has very strongly morphed away from the sort of implied survival game. Mm-hmm. It sort of... Because they, they... Now it's they, raising animals again? They said they didn't know what the game was going to uh. be back when they did the interviews after that that big trailer from like, what was that, two years ago? Three it's years longer ago? longer than that, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, because two years ago would have been after the pandemic right <laughs> isn't it weird how you just eliminate like yeah, those like three, three years, years it just happen. it didn't yeah. exist yeah um but like i was trying to figure out i've been i went to two concerts this past week and that's the first concerts i've been to since i think maybe 2016 oh really and like i'm like oh yeah i haven't been to a concert in like three years and people are like wait 2016 was like seven years yeah ago. I'm like, all right <laughs> yeah it's different um it's an experience going to your first concert after covid yeah everybody's so rude yeah like, <laughs> you're like nothing changed i'm just gonna i'm just gonna tell you all right now um if you go into a concert and you you're freaking out and you're screaming and you're singing along and you're jumping up and down and dancing awesome that's what a concert's for if a, if they play a song you don't care about do not talk through the whole yeah. fucking song <laughs> yeah. because other people might want to hear it yeah Holy shit. Or putting the phones up in front of you so you can't see the stage. uh, Because you know what? There's not going to be like 800 YouTube videos from everybody else up on YouTube by the time you walk out of the venue. Well, I was at one last night that like, um, so it was a... uh, it was a surprise show, Counting Crows, mm-hmm. uh, in at the Troubadour, which I've never seen them That's in a, a venue, venue that small. Yeah. There was like 200 people there. Yeah. And it was you could tell we were all old, because it was old people yeah, playing yeah. old music for a bunch of old people. Yeah. <laughs> you could tell we're all old, because when they first came out and started playing, all the phones go up, and everybody takes pictures, and then all the phones went away and never, never came back. Never saw it again. Everyone's, everyone wanted their picture, and now we're just going to listen to the music. Yeah. And it was great. Well, last time I was there, I went and saw Dag Nasty, which is like a hardcore band mm-hmm. from D.C., and there were no phones because there was a pit. Right. And that's one thing I'll say. Like, there, punk- was no, there was no pit at Counting Crows. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but my point is, like, there's certain genres where that doesn't happen because right. people are too worried about actually listening to the music, believe it or not. So I hear you, man. Like, mm-hmm. I hate the modern concert scene where you go and people don't watch the concert they watch it through their yeah. they're looking at their phone it's like yeah. what are I, you doing i didn't see too much of that in, in these two because it was it was it's for an older client older audience but like yeah. so the other one was last week it was the national uh which They're is great. which is the greek which is fine because you know even if someone's holding their phone up i can't see it because the, the tiered yeah. scene is good but so there i've seen them i think I, 11 or 12 times and this is the first time since like 2016 but like the um the there were two girls behind us who like were talking with one of them they were very young they mm-hmm. were like maybe 18 19. surprised they were there well that's the thing they're like oh i've the one girl's like oh i've seen them like five times and i'm just like wow kid i've been seeing these guys before you were <laughs> existed like, they're pretty yeah, sure probably before they were alive. but it was interesting because <laughs> yeah. she loved the modern the current stuff like the last three albums and i like their first four albums yep. more and so every time the old stuff that i like a lot came on she'd just start fucking talking <laughs> to her friend and i'm like like excuse the, me this is my favorite yeah. song and usually it doesn't matter like because they're pretty loud you know there's a lot of, but when they sing something like quieter like about today like halfway through i'm like I don't. I want to say something, but if I say something, then you're bothering more. other people too. No, if I'm, and also if I miss say something, I'm going to miss more of the song. Right, right. Than if I just <laughs> you know, unbelievable. I got yeah. like, like people have no concept of other people around them anymore. I am glad that we're able to go back to concerts. Yeah, for it's sure. nice. Yeah. For sure. So thank God we finally got through all that stuff, and we're kind of getting back to life as normal. I hope you guys are kind of able to go out and do some of the fun stuff as well. Uh, let's see. Do we have any other things to address? Oh, you guys are probably wondering like what we're doing. Oh. That all started with the E3 discussion, by the yeah. way. Normally, this time of year, like, I am prepared to Concerts be... Concerts are back. E3 is not. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's the moral right. there. I'm prepared to, like, be overwhelmed. 
Like I get in this mode of like, you know what? I'm probably not gonna be able to like cover everything and play everything and that's okay. I'm one person, it's all I can do. Like now I'm like, okay, I'll put my feet up on the couch and I'll watch something for an hour. Like mm -hmm. I, it's just- Man, different. welcome to my world since like 2014. <laughs> like it's a it's a better place, I promise. I don't think it is, I don't like it better. I'd rather be hyped I mean, I, like- I mean, I have not been super hyped for anything since the, the aughts. Yeah. Like I, at some point, Games lost. Like so 2010 are, was your tipping point. Somewhere basically. around there, yeah. Like it was. Just, they lost the ability to really like blow me away and shock me outside of individual little things. Yeah. Like, like there used to be a you know like one of the, you know even like the year they they blew the doors off the uh, the you know the Twilight Princess thing and everybody freaked out and I literally saw a human adult humans crying on the floor of the Kodak Theater because they showed Zelda. I'm like, okay, people. <laughs> that was one of my earliest indications that the Nintendo fans might not be all right, you know? Um, but, like, the... Like, it hit a point where, like, if you look around at the other stuff that year, there was tons of... It was something, oh, this is exciting here, this is exciting, this is... Exciting. And I don't know if I got old or the games just got more predictable. Not that I care. I mean, but they, they hit a point where I'm like... Until I got my get my hands on this thing and I, I'm saving my progress on my own account, I don't care. Yeah. Like, I you know, like I I certainly am excited about Starfield, but would I be excited to see Starfield like displayed on a giant screen at the whatever the the theater that they always Microsoft? Oh, they don't they would have their own theater now, so it'd be that it'd be their theater at the at LA Live. Um, or like to go play like five minutes of it on a demo. No, I wouldn't. I would. I, I would. I would. I don't. I don't care until it counts. Frankly, I don't even like. It all counts to me. I don't even like betas that much. Yeah. Um. And it count. It counts. To, I want to see how it feels to play. I don't. I, I want will, to see if the shooting in Starfield is trash because that's my out, biggest fear. I will find out when I have the game. I don't care. I don't want to play it early. I don't care about... The only reason I would care about it, playing any of that early is to talk about it on this show. If I wasn't doing this show, I would never think about that shit until the day it came out. Well, I would just say this. Based upon the numbers and the betas for these big games, you are an anomaly. Most people thirst to play these games early. Yeah, I, mean, I see. But I, if, if you can't carry that save over, you can go fuck yourself. Like, <laughs> I, like, I will agree. Like... I prefer betas where the save, and we'll, we'll oh, talk for about. Sure. We're going to talk about Diablo Four here then, in a minute, like, because then it counts, <laughs> right? Like to me, that's what I mean by counts is if I can carry my progress over. Square Enix yeah. for all its stupid ideas, and it has a lot of stupid ideas. But look, this is bringing up a good over. point. You have tons of money to buy whatever you want. Other people are making purchase decisions by playing oh, sure. this stuff early or seeing this stuff early or getting reports from people like us early. They're trying to figure out whether they should buy stuff or not. Oh, sure. To but you, I, that doesn't matter. It doesn't, but also it never mattered. To me, it, but you've like, always not had to worry about money. Like, well, that, I mean, there was less time to buy everything. I mean, I never had to worry about getting paying for games for twelve years because yeah. I was in the industry like reviewing shit. But at the same time, like even back then, beyond like, the preview discs we'd get, like I'd dabble with them a bit, but I don't care until I can actually really get into it, and I don't feel I can fully get into it in, until it counts. Yeah. Um, and you know, like also, if I wasn't doing this, I would play a lot less games. It do, I will say this, it does spoil a little bit of the excitement of the game coming out on day one. I guess, like, the feeling of the unknowing, is this going to be great? Well, is it going to suck? Like, you kind of like know we're, already. Well, we're also, I feel like you're coming from the Diablo 4 experience on that, which is mm -hmm. more pronounced in that regard yeah. than I've seen in a very long time. For sure. Yeah. Par which is partly because they let you play so, so much, much of, it of it for the beta. I mean, yeah. that's, which is good. It is, yeah. Um... But yeah, no, it's it's very like there's a moment in early in playing the final version of Diablo 4 where you're like, if you played the beta and got, because you know, I got to level 20 to get the wolf pup backpack, yeah. like, I did all that shit. Uh -huh. And I'm like, oh, I got to play like 20 hours all over to, to again. see new yeah. shit. Like, it's like, <laughs> yeah, I got to kill so many goat men yep. <laughs> between now and then. It's like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. It, there, there is a, re a realization uh. of like, oh, yeah, this is why I like stuff that carries the save over. Yep. Uh, so anyway, E3 stuff. Uh, the way everything's timing out, like, I think we're just going to do a show on Tuesday, Matt, and it may be a little longer than normal because... Everything is done by Tuesday. So Microsoft's thing is Sunday. Capcom just announced a thing for Monday. Like by a week from today, like all the cards are going to be on the table. Um, and I mentioned this in last week's episode. It's, I believe, 
for the quality of our shows and our content, that it's much better to have time to, one, digest all the information so you can formulate your opinions and your takes on it, but also to have the media ready to show you guys as we discuss this stuff. So as of right now, we're probably just gonna do Game Face, business as usual next Tuesday, and we will wrap up all the stuff that's gonna happen here over the next seven days. It's gonna be one hell of an episode of Game Face, probably the best episode of the year. When's and that's you, what we're aiming Ubisoft for. Ubisoft Monday? Ubisoft, is it Monday? I can't remember. I thought it was, was no, it I think it is that? Monday, actually. Is it? Yeah. Or yeah. maybe it's Tuesday. We'll have to check. I want to say, I feel like the number 12 is in my head attached to that. I might be the wrong. The 12th is Monday, and yeah. that's Capcom. Ubisoft is, Vincent says Ubisoft is Monday. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, your boy Shane's going to be busting his ass to get that Tuesday. I'm very, I'm very curious about that one because I don't know what yeah. the fuck they're going to show. Is it just me just dance for an hour? Right. I don't, like, what yeah, are you yeah. going to do? Well, yeah, I guess it's Assassin's Creed Mirage. I think that'll like, get a big chunk of it. But Maybe an update on that service that's never coming out. Right, <laughs> what is right. that? Assassin's Creed Infinity? Yeah, what, or? yeah I think that's it. Yeah, Infinity. Yeah. What the hell happened to that? Uh. <laughs> I mean, they have to release the game so that they'll all snap together. I mean, I'd love to see that Star Wars game, but like, feel yeah. like that's. I mean, there's people that say that that's close. Trailer, to I think. guess, probably. Yeah, I mean, at least an acknowledgement. Yeah, but, but it's all. I think it's all going to work out because we're going to have Microsoft on Sunday, and then those two big things on Monday, and then boom, Game Face on Tuesday. So the scheduling, I think, is actually working out. Jeff's thing is that Thursday. I don't know. And I guess we're going to see the first Mortal Kombat 1 stuff at Jeff's thing. That seems to be the big headliner for Summer Game Fest, yeah. which is awesome. So I'm excited to see that as well. You're, you're the fighting game, apparently. Yep. So anyway, that's kind of our loose schedule. As always, as I say, follow us on Twitter. Um, if you watch any of our content on the site, ask Shane anything this Friday. Probably going to talk about that stuff, lay everything out for you guys. If you're in tune with what's going on at Sifted, you'll know exactly what we're going to do for all the not E3 stuff is what I've been calling it. So... Um, Time Zini, no sifted reacts. We don't really do reacts like we have in the past, yeah, but, but like that was more like I mean, again, when when it was E three week, it made more sense to do all of that real time because it actually saved you work. Because we could sit in here, could, yeah. or wherever we were, had an, our our studio yeah. for all day. And it was all day. And just bang it out. Over, now oh, yeah. it's so spread out. Like now you have to be. It's just a lot of driving and getting people to show up to watch it at the time at yeah. different time. Yeah, it's. It's different. It's just, it's not E3 anymore. And so, you know, a lot of you guys are like, I don't care about E3, but this is one of the byproducts of not E3 mm -hmm. is that it's just not set up the way that it used to be. We can't sit in a room and bang out like three or four press conferences in a day. I mean, and, I don't mind that either just because it was, the, the, the audio never worked. Right, Right, because it was always a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. We were always scrambling trying to get like the audio from the stream, going through mm -hmm. the TriCaster and then making sure that it didn't. It, it never worked the same way twice. It never did. No. It was always bizarre. We'd always figure it out just at the nick of time. Yeah. It's so funny. So that's one part of E3 I will not miss. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, there there won't be, well, there will be, we'll react to everything, but we'll actually have formulated opinions instead of just flying off the handle. And look, we're not the people who are going to do the backflip out of our chair over Shenmue anyway. Like, no. that's just not our style if you haven't figured it out. We're not like the crazy fanboy reactionary Re people. Shenmue 3, reaction to Shenmue 3 is about as reactive as I get. And yeah. I think that was like, oh, wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Didn't expect that. <laughs> Yes. So anyway, you guys know how we roll. Uh, I, I, when they had first announced it, I kind of wanted to jump in early, and I tried on my phone while we were live to try to get in the pledge that would get you the his jacket. Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad I didn't get that because <laughs> oh boy, did I hate Shenmue Three. <laughs> so did I. What a terrible. I game. literally like hated it. It's terrible. I'll tell it you, it is this. really abysmal. Oh yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. I played it a little bit earlier this year with a mod on the PC that removes the stamina meter. That would help. And it. Way better, yeah. way better game. I mean, it's still not great, good. Yeah, but it's like it's it's doesn't feel like you're playing like a terrible, weird. I mean, I've sim I had thing. to force myself through the amount of hours it's that I played Shenmue awful. Three. <laughs> it it's really just is. awful. Yeah. And that's just someone who has a signed Shenmue. Poster. I'll Indian Drain. wrestle anyone who says otherwise because <laughs> you're wrong. You are wrong. Uh, okay, we got a lot of housekeeping to get to before we get to the show proper, and we have a ton of games to talk about in the big bulk of the show, so we need to get moving. First up, big story this week, Matt. Mm -hmm. Jason Schreier, another expose. We all probably should have seen this coming. I don't no, know why I did we it. We were <laughs> right about a bunch of shit we speculated on about that thing. Yeah, he basically busted Arcane's balls over Redfall. He went mm -hmm. behind the scenes, talked with a lot of people who worked on the game. And 
And I was right. It was leftover stuff from before the acquisition that Microsoft just basically let go. Mm-hmm. I love the the most damning line in that are the, is like the other arcane uh, employees that hoped that Microsoft would cancel it. Oh. Like, is there more damning yeah, comment than they that? hoped that he would they would cancel it or reboot it as a single player game? Yeah, and it was exactly what we were talking about. It's like, why would you make arcane? The immersive sim people make a multiplayer shooter. It's so weird. Yeah, it makes no sense. Again, it was low-hanging fruit for Xbox. It was like, look, we bought these guys. This stuff is like, they're halfway done with this. We can show some early returns on this investment. But yeah, like, it ended up blowing up in Microsoft's face. Yeah, and you th- I mean, you throw you throw this concept at like a prey design idea, and I think you might have something. Mm-hmm. It's, that's an interesting thing. It is. Um, Just poorly executed. Yeah, but like, it's not what they did. They did this weird halfway quarter way thing Mm -hmm. and it turned out to be a mess and it's like it a lot of that article explains a lot like why it's empty all the time and you're sort of wandering and an an abandoned like where are the enemies like like one of the things that i always find a little oppressive about games like that like left for dead and stuff is that there's you're just constantly fighting so you can't get anywhere because it's and then if poor points in red form, I'm like, where is everybody? Like, yeah. Aren't there supposed to be vampires in this town? Right. Everybody just walked to the fucking store. Who cares? Yeah. Nobody here. <laughs> like, yep. Um, Vince is asking, worst game, Redfall or Bleeding Edge? <laughs> well, what's Bleeding Edge? I, I vaguely remember it. It was like some third party, like, vampire thing. Oh, I don't, I don't remember yeah. that at all. I mean... I mean, I I understand Gollum's bad. Uh, I haven't played it. The, I mean, I don't know if Redfall is worse than um, Wanted Dead. Wanted Dead is probably the That's worst thing I've played. That's a good comparison. Wanted Dead is probably the worst thing I've played this year. Gollum is worse than Redfall, for sure. Even yeah. though their Metacritics are the same, basically, Gollum is way worse than Redfall. Like, Gollum is just incompetent. Whereas Redfall is a, is a product of poor decision-making. Mm. Like, Gollum is just a game made by people who had no business making uh, an action-adventure game. This was just like wrong team, yeah, wrong concept. It's just kind of dull. Yeah, but it was like it works. <laughs> I love the thing where they couldn't staff up because they couldn't tell anybody about the story, but like right. they couldn't get people that make this kind of game to work for them because they all thought they they were working on like an arcane style right. game. They didn't want to work on that. I'm like, <laughs> wow. Like that's why they announced so early. Apparently, it's, it's yeah. what a what a mess. Yeah. Um, Cinetai says, uh, what do you do if critically acclaimed games from Arcane keep not being financially viable? Look, we're not saying that, like, they should keep throwing the good money after the bad. Because no. you're right, those immersive sims aren't exactly filling the coffers with money either. I think what we're seeing with Redfall is uh, a studio or a brand in transition. Yeah. Arcane's got to figure out a new idea. It's got to figure out what it's going to be going forward. And this was just a very awkward transition of them trying to figure that part out. So... Uh, but another great article by Jason Schreier, all, mm-hmm. you know, great, great interviews with people who were there, um, great access. Yeah, and it was an interesting thing. I, I was talking to some of my game dev friends, and some, to be fair, a lot of them work at much, much bigger companies. Mm-hmm. Than the, you know, we're talking about Ubisoft, EA things. Yeah. But some of them, you know, because he was like 70% of the people, the, the, the Prey devs were gone by like, you know, a certain point through development on Redfall. And some of my friends were like, that's just normal turnover. And it's like, yeah, it's normal turnover for a 400-person team. Right. It's not apparently not normal turnover. For a 100-person team. For a hundred, I mean, it was, that's even less on it. It was more like, like 70 or 60 What did you expect? It's like, that's a lot. Like, uh, and that's a lot of talent walking out. Oh, yeah. I mean, then you want that talent for not Redfall. Yeah. And it was an interesting kind of political angle where it's like a bunch of people didn't want to move to Austin because mm-hmm. they didn't want to live in Texas. Yeah. Uh, yep. We don't want to live under Governor Abbott. Thank yeah, I mean, you much. force people to move someplace they don't want to move. They're not going to go because yeah. they can. They it's very easy for talented people to find jobs in other places. Mm-hmm. So and a lot of them would let them work remotely. Right. So. Was uh, Arcane not willing to do that? Doesn't sound, it sounds like they, they wanted you to move to, to Austin. Yeah. But like there was, a, I mean, there was a controversy about that on on Twitter this week too, where like some couple like not top of the line producers and director and dev people were kind of saying like you can't make good games remotely and all these people that made really good <laughs> games remotely are like no we made pe- no no one on the pentiment team ever saw each other in person yeah and we made that and just it fun. came out great like yeah. it was all these people that just like popping up it's like no that just means you're bad at management yeah like, we, i mean we made we made this we made that it was it was like some real good games that were all done remotely yeah the problem is there are some people where if they don't have supervision they will slack off yeah like there are some people matt that have direct supervision that slack off. Let's oh, sure. be honest. 
Like every company I've worked at, but there are people of, that you work with. You're like, how the f oh, sure, are you one, still employed? But one of the advantages of work of remote working is you find out who those people are real right. fast. You do, yeah. And a good manager is gonna, 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 yeah, gonna cull that. Yep. Um. So yeah, I think it's a net positive. I mean, the main thing, the, a lot of the people that the, the higher level people that demand, you know, people come into the office, just people that like to be in charge Bully, of people honestly like, like, yeah you, it's very hard to lord your status over someone else uh, when you can't over a see Zoom meeting you yeah know, like, it is because but, you're also exposed you're in front of everybody else when you're there so you have to yeah. mind your p's and q's you can't shirk back to being a, a crap a piece of crap so um, my guess is no redfall too uh probably not <laughs> just going out on a limb here i think maybe we're probably not going to get a sequel to redfall unfortunately um, but I wish we had more reporting like this. It seems like Jason Schreier's always the person who has to do this. And really, Matt, I think the problem is that reporting like that doesn't really pay. No. Like, I'm sure Bloomberg is figuring this out now. They're like, we have probably the best investigative journalist in the games yeah. industry working for us. And like, what are we? No offense to Jason Schreier or anyone who does this kind of work. But it's like in the age of social media where everything just gets shared. And it's like Bloomberg is behind a paywall. Do you think anybody is going to pay to go past the paywall well, to clearly read Clearly not, because a couple days later, they just made it free for people to read. Yeah. Like, I, it's a shame that there's no financial incentive for real journalism. I actually talked about this on uh, Ask Shane Anything on last Friday. Somebody asked me about, you know, some of the things that have happened and, like, is it worth it? Like, Kotaku basically getting blacklisted by Nintendo mm -hmm. for leaking the Zelda Tears of the Kingdom stuff that leaked. They're asking, like, should they have done that? Is it worth it? And, like, in a lot of cases, it's not in this industry. Like, real no, journalism do doesn't pay in this industry. It hurts you. You can get well, blacklisted. Real, real journalism doesn't pay anywhere. It really doesn't. anything. Yeah. Like, nobody wants to pay for any of that stuff. Yep. So, I don't know. I'm if, glad if, that Bloomberg if, is putting up the money for this to happen, but... Yeah, I mean, it was a, it's a system that was built on the idea that the only way to read these articles is to buy a physical piece of paper yeah. back in the day. And yeah. that's not true anymore, and everyone just thinks everything online should be free. Yep. So I've, I've subscribed to some things, uh, LA Times and mm -hmm. some other things, just I, the things I read regularly, The Atlantic sometimes. Well, sometimes like, you just want to support. It's like our patrons, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, yeah, you get our content earlier, and in fact, in our case, way earlier than most other patrons or Patreons. Um, yeah, but still, ultimately, day. it does go free on YouTube, and the people who support us financially are the people who want to support us and make sure that we stay around. The people who can take it or leave it, they don't care. So... Mm -hmm. It's an interesting place we're in, and unfortunately, you know, I feel like a lot of the outlets that do Survivor get the support, they don't get the support because they're great journalists or they do journalism well. They do it because they get it because they're charismatic and people mm -hmm. like them. And that, to me, is the danger. That or they they report things that people already agree with, and right? Or they say them. exactly what they're thinking, right. and they're con they're by they're you know they're confirming their biases like mm -hmm. daily. So, and we don't do that here on Game Face. Like we call it how we see them, and I know that that pisses some people off, as we saw when our episode for Tears of the Kingdom went up on YouTube. Indeed. So. That's the way it is. Some people appreciate honesty and real journalism, and some people don't. And unfortunately, Matt, I think the vast majority of people do not. No, probably not. It's sad. I mean, I certainly think Schreier's stuff is worth knowing. Yeah. So anyway, Jason Schreier, tip of the cap, brother. Uh, next up, we already mentioned this kind of Xbox's big showcase for 2023. It's not E3 press conference coming up here this weekend. And the good news is no CG trailers. Mm -hmm. It's going to be all in-engine footage for all their trailers. Now, I'm guessing like the Fable trailer is going to be like a gameplay trailer meaning it's all in-engine footage just cut together to make it look very cinematic and fun. Like, I don't think we're going to get a big chunk of 10 minutes of Fable gameplay no, is what I'm getting. He said either, either in-game footage, in-engine footage, or in-game mixed with cinematic. Yeah. So there will be no all, if not first party, there might be third party stuff. Yep. So it looks like we're going to get some legit stuff. I know we're going to get a huge chunk of Starfield played, for sure. I, there'll be Starfield, there'll be Fable, there better be Forza. No, um, that's a or my given, I would assume. You would think, or my <laughs> fantasy team is in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. um, and then beyond that, who I mean, it, so, it really sounds from his tweeting that like they're ready to finally blow the doors off all their... First their, party their, stuff. Their first party stuff they've been working Thank on. Thank God. So. Yes, that's what we've been waiting for. <laughs> um, Microsoft E3, a day late and a dollar short. <laughs> E3 doesn't even exist anymore, but here we are. Well, they're finally delivering what they should be delivering at E3 now that E3 doesn't exist anymore. Um, but it, it better late than never is the way I see it. Uh, another smaller story from this week. 
Capcom has a survey out there right now asking fans for what are the next Resident Evil games that it should remake because this has become What's left? a cash cow <laughs> for Capcom. And look, I'm not busting their balls because oh, yeah. they're doing a great job on these remakes. but And they're still putting new ones out alongside them. It's right. not like they've stopped the yeah, franchise yeah. to do this. But there's really only one answer to this question, and it's Code Veronica. No. Really? It's one. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people feel like it was already kind of remade. Remake is garbage. I know you. We know you, you hate you, it. You need to get her over it. It's all pre-rendered <laughs> shit, and they need to do it in the style of the new remakes. And then they should do Zero. And then maybe Code Veronica. Why do you place Code Veronica? Code Veronica is unnecessary to the story. Uh, it's kind of terrible. Um, you it could, is not very. If you go back and play it now, it's not. You a good could game. make it like probably something better. You'd have to rework that substantially, both from a gameplay and story perspective, because. There's just a lot of stuff in there that wouldn't fly anymore, both in terms of how the puzzles are designed and the whole, like, brother-sister double identity incest trans yeah, I wonder thing. how that would play now. Like, you'd need to, re <laughs> like, you'd need to run that sucker by some sensitivity readers, yeah, like, in a, yeah. in a big way. Like, you're, you're playing with fire on that one in the same way you'd be playing with fire with, like, Resident Evil 5 remake, where you're like, maybe it shouldn't all be African yeah, people you're, you're, you're killing yeah. in this thing. You know, it's like, well, that, I mean, that was a big deal well, back when then. it came out well the other thing with resident evil 5 is like hey could you make it playable if i don't have a co-op partner because that <laughs> sucked i think I matt the way i looked at it is that of the main line resident evil games code veronica is the worst and so that's the one who needs remade that's the one that needs no. remade the most no and like fixed. fuck that game like like get to it if you get to it but like you need to do one so one through four are all like pristine and ready to go in a in a modern version. Yeah, like I mean, like you're complete, probably right. That probably will be that the one. Story. One through four is basically a story. Mm -hmm. One through four is like a nice unit of yeah. Resident Evil. Do zero if you get to it. Do Code Veronica if you get to it. I never but really like, liked Resident Evil Zero. I neither neither did I. But it's more a part of the story than Code Veronica is. That's true. Um, yeah. And then, but it's also kind if, of a splinter. If you want to play five and six, that's on you, basically. Yeah. I don't I don't <laughs> think those games really need a huge revamp. Yeah, I mean they were they were made not that long ago. No, so. I mean I. Resident Evil 5 does have, I mean, I guess it was probably funny if you weren't me, but I do remember the first time I gave, uh, what was her name? Is Shiva? Is that her name? From which game? The, your your co-op partner in yep. 5. Yeah, Shiva. And I can give her stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember I gave her, because I didn't want to carry it. I'm like, okay, cool, extra inventory space. So I'll give her as a mule. Yeah. Right. And so I gave her the submachine gun, because I wasn't going to use that, right? Because very near the very beginning of the game, and the bullets for it. And as soon as I end pause, she turns towards the zombie and just burns all the ammo out of it. I'm like, and I'm like, what? Hey! That's and hilarious. Like, so it was just like, okay. Like, yeah. you, okay, you don't get to carry the bullets. <laughs> That's a deal breaker. Like, I did not need my, I mean, Ashley is about as far as I'll go with, like, micromanaging a, a partner in one of these games. Yeah. Uh, that was too far. Yeah. Uh, so if they, did, if they did five, I would like them to make the co-op system work, like, I not even work just like so I don't have to think about it so much but like I think one is much more is, is the it should be the priority I think one would be, would benefit the most from it chats all over the place literally like all over the place gun survivor zero and code Veronica yeah, you're just off and we, re1 needs re1 to think and zero is the right again. answer I want Veronica actually the real answer is dino crisis <laughs> but like yeah <laughs> yeah that would be my do do a remake one and then do dino crisis yeah dino crisis would be amazing to see now with god of gamblers 33 says that they were shooting asians in re5 as well all right doesn't doesn't really change my point yeah it's a little off-putting the yeah. beginning of that game i'll i agree with that for sure mm -hmm. um, there were moments where i was like oh this doesn't feel right right and yeah. then and then you also say the same thing about the gameplay yeah so <laughs> 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 Nothing feels right here. That's true. Uh, next up, over the smaller stories this week. And um, if you want to play uh, Resident Evil 6, that's your problem. Yeah. So. <laughs> it was finally confirmed this week that Final Fantasy 16 is indeed going to get a PC version. And do you remember, Matt, the very first trailer for Final Fantasy 16, there was that little text along the bottom that said PC. And people freaked out. They're like, mm. oh my God, it's coming to PC too. And Square Enix was like, eh, not so fast. And now they are saying so fast. So... Um, Square Enix has officially shared that there is a PC version coming. However, the rub is that the PC version, they won't even start development on it until the PlayStation 5 version is done. Yeah, you're, this, this is a PS5 game yeah. for the foreseeable future. Now, another thing they said, though, is they don't foresee any DLC or anything for Final Fantasy 16 Square Enix, mm. which I'm kind of impressed with. 
It's interesting. Yeah. They're like, we're going to finish up this game, and it's going to be the game. And it's going to be definitive, yeah, well, and then we're going to move on to the PC that's version. That te- that's the Evilist team. The Evilist team does the, does things up right. Yep. So I am really excited for this game. It's coming in like less than a month. I think this one... This month is a good month for games, I man. think this one is going to be uh, one of the... You know, what we're talking about demos and I think this one's gonna the demo's gonna help because the pre-orders on this are below Final Fantasy 15 really at, at this point yeah. wow so there's some concern about what interesting because it, it looks so different like, yeah you know, uh, to me that's a strength like yeah I think the, fa- <laughs> that's I think the fact that it doesn't it. look like some fucking 14 year old and for 14 year olds like afternoon anime crap I can't even like explain what Final Fantasy was for like four entries like what even was it it was just this weird thing it was just, it was Nomura run amok, basically. Oh, the um, costuming, everything about it was just so bizarre. Like, like, I'm sorry if there aren't enough belt buckles in this one for you, but like... <laughs> or oversized shoes. Yeah, or like weird, <laughs> like the, I hate the... There aren't f- enough belt buckles. I mean, that's what he, that's, everyone's just wearing belts everywhere. Like, if, like yeah. whoever makes belt buckles, like the, the, the brass belt buckles in the in Nomura's Final Fantasy worlds must be the actual millionaires yeah. in those worlds, because that's the most in-demand product. Um, this looks, I mean, this looks great. I mean, I don't know how it's going to, I'm skeptical about it playing sort of the way, you know, because we haven't really seen the combat in a natural state, like the demo mm-hmm. stuff. It's all it's, chopped cause, together. Because everything looks like damage sponges, but you can't really judge that because they might just be taking a lot of hits because they want the enemies to be alive while they do all the fancy stuff to demo it. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think this, you know, in relation to that, what we talked about a little bit earlier, I like, do think the demo for this is going to help. I think, I think, you know, especially if you can carry the save over. But I think, you know, the inevitable demo for this is going to be a big deal in terms of convincing people whether or not they want to buy it. Well, it's interesting. Schneeky says, this doesn't look like Final Fantasy to me. No, this it doesn't. Is, but to me, it does. Well, it looks like... To what, him, it doesn't. To because me, it he's like younger. What, it looks like what Final Fantasy would have been if... What it should have turned... To me, what it should have turned well, into because in what 3D. happened was the... Final Fantasy VI was the last Final Fantasy that really looked something like this. I guess twelve did a little bit. Mm-hmm. But that was the same team. That was the Ibilis team. So, like, Final Fantasy VI's team kind of split into two. Mm-hmm. And one side went on to continue to make Final Fantasy VII and VIII and all that stuff. And the other side went and they did Final Fantasy Tactics and the Ibilis stuff and fourteen and eleven, I think. And all the, like, they, so there's two different diverging things. And, this, and they did twelve. And this is the first Final Fantasy that team has done since twelve. Other than 14, which is hard. You know, yeah. I know they're numbered, but like, I don't really count that as a, you know, that's an online game. It's different. Um, and again, I think most people, I haven't played much of it, but I think uh, most people do seem to agree that Final Fantasy 14's DLC is the best written Final Fantasy since 6. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, so yeah, to me, this looks like an alternate timeline version where Final Fantasy never started to suck. Yeah. Um, I mean, to me, someone who grew up playing Final Fantasy, you know, in 2D. Yeah. This is Final Fantasy yeah, to me. Yeah, this looks this more, other weird crap that we've been dealing with for the last like decade plus. That's not Final yeah, Fantasy like, to I me. I can't describe how happy I am that just watching all this footage. There's not a single instance of like some weird floating drone thing that's made up of circles yeah, or something. Hard Fantasy. That's like, Final Fantasy like to me. Like all the false crap from thirteen and all that. Like yeah. all that. All that design aesthetic. I don't. Final like Fantasy it. ten. 10-2, all that crap. And you've crap. got tech, you've got like this kind of the steampunky, diesel punky stuff. That's fine. I was in six. That was fine. But yeah, to me, this is exactly what I would have preferred Final Fantasy to become aesthetically. All along. Yep. Yeah. So I'm very excited for it. I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised when they finally get to play. And if you don't like it, well, 7-2 is coming along. Yeah, Rebirth sometime. is about to come out, and I'm sure it'll go right back to the corny ass Final Fantasy that other people Oh, yeah. Want. You'll have all the anime grunts you need soon enough. Don't yep. worry about it. <laughs> uh, next up. We got some more information on Marvel Spider-Man 2, a couple little tidbits, and I know this is a highly anticipated game for a lot of you. Um, the first little bit that we got is that the another thing, Matt, that we get right, we get shit right all the freaking time. Like, we'll watch a trailer, we'll be like, oh, that's why this happened. That's why they're doing this. Here's another case where we wondered how the character switching was going to work in Marvel Spider-Man 2, and we said, you know what? If you're in the open world, you're probably going to be able to switch whenever you want. If you're playing the campaign, you're, the game is going to tell you when to switch, and that's exactly how it's mm-hmm. going to work. If you're just out in the open world, just tooling around, you can swap between the two Spider-Men whenever you want to. If you're plowing through the main campaign, the game dictates mm-hmm. when you switch from one character to the next. But I will bet you that there's going to be a period where Peter falls so down to the dark, to the symbiote costume that there's going to be an open world section where you can't switch to right, him. Right, right. They're going to force that, you. And that's going to feel bad because you're used to being able to switch to him. And that's, <laughs> how, that's how they're going to show in a gameplay way 
that Miles is alone and needs to solve this problem. Uh huh. Because because I know how the bastards think. <laughs> um, also, that's just a good way to use them. But so I, I promise you, at some point. You're gonna have Peter taken away from you, and it's gonna feel bad. Yeah, intentionally. Yeah, yep. Um, and then another small thing that we learned about the game this week is that the world, the open world, is double the size of the last mm-hmm. game. Also, how smart is that? Where like, you see the thing, he's got like the symbiote kind of thing, and it kind of like how smart is that? Because you know what that is, right? That's how they're gonna inter, inter, like, like basically incorporate the chosen costume you're wearing. So when the symbiote comes uh, down in a, in, a, in a cinematic and becomes sort of that armor-looking thing, yeah. and then smooths out, when it smooths out, it's going to become whatever costume you have Peter wearing. Oh, you think so? I'll, yeah, because the symbiote can, s- can simulate colors and fabrics. Right, right, that's right. I forgot so that's, about that. that's how you're still going to be able to customize his outfit, but still have him in the symbiote. So in the cutscene, he'll do all this stuff, and the black thing will come down like that, and it'll be all that bulky thing, and it'll go shh. It'll, it'll dissolve become, down. It'll, it'll like morph into whatever you're wearing. It's so smart. Yeah. It's it's It's... I love seeing the little things in this where you're like, yep, Insomniac. Yeah, the, like, more, the more I learn Insomniac about this game. Insomniac is five, five minutes ahead of everybody yep. else. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the more I see of this game, the more I learn about it, the more excited I become. Uh, still don't have a hard release date, though, right? No, just fall. Yeah. But I'm guessing November. Yeah. Um, adding Queens in Brooklyn makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know. Well, if you're going to have Miles in there. Oh, yeah. Well, he, they're both from Queens. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and right. uh, but Brooklyn's from where Captain America's from. So right, just, right. I mean, they're just right there. It makes, yeah. it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and that's also, I'm sure, why they've added the, the gliding ability and the slingshot ability is because Queens is not nearly as vertical as Manhattan. That's true. So you're going to need a different way of traversing the area. I mean, most of New York isn't as vertical yeah. as Manhattan. That's so, just the way it is. And it's going to provide a very different sort of environment in a way. Uh, you know, like Swinging through the canyons of the skyscrapers is very different, uh, especially once you're used to how you're, how the, the web swinging works. So. Yep. That's all going to be very cool. It also explains why there's more stuff happening in the harbor and in the river because you're going to have to get across them. Yeah, yeah. They're going to so. be a part of the game instead of just being this border, basically, like they have been yep. in prior Spider-Man I will games. say, I think this is about as far as they can push New York. And yeah. I, I think, I mean, they might do it already in this one. I don't know, but I don't think so. At some point, they're going to need to go multiverse or time travel or something like I, different versions of Manhattan. I mean, there's still parts of New York that aren't in there. there. Is, there is a like, non-zero chance that that's the. Miles but who wants to go to Long Island? Like? A, yeah, right. <laughs> Just like, oh, that, nobody. That's a. That's a. Who wants to go to Coney Island? Like, finally, Spider-Man Three, Jersey. You know, like, <laughs> but um, it, the uh, I, I think there's a non-zero chance that the Miles Morales equivalent follow-up game for this is like a Spider-Verse thing, yeah. and like you get to go to like 2099 New York and like. Miles you know, is from Brooklyn, actually. Pharaoh Doll brings oh, yeah? up. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah, why I said that, that they have sense. to have it mm. because it's his stomping grounds. Or well, whatever. they're all kind of on the same little island. Part. Yeah, yeah. They're very close to each other. You yeah. start getting to Staten Island, Long Island. That's where you start yeah, getting. Yeah, that's a whole different thing. It's like <laughs> it's a whole different world. I'll be honest with you. It's it's like Long, the, Long Island the... can get its own Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. uh, so anyway, very excited for Marvel Spider Man Two. Hopefully, we get a release date for that soon. Uh, next up, another big announcement this week was the MetaQuest 3. And they dropped the price of MetaQuest 2 back down again. <laughs> so so MetaQuest 2, fun while it for like four or five months, they jacked the price up 100 bucks. They announced MetaQuest 3, they dropped the price back down $100. Like, what are they doing over there, Matt? Well, it seems like they have no plan. I think they just can think that the top level quest should cost x much and it's so meta quest 3 500 and so far they haven't announced different versions um they're also kind of cagey about announcing the specs for this thing they did say that the 500 dollars model will be 128 gigabytes is that the biggest meta quest 2 right now 128 I have no idea i'm not sure if they have a 256 i don't pay attention to this at all yeah I will um, never own a, a Quest. I will never bother with any of this. I don't care. Well, Quest 2 at launch was $300. So this is going to be $200 more at launch mm-hmm. than Quest 2 was. So they're bumping it up a lot. Um, as I said, the specs that they provided are pretty light. All they said was that it will have the highest resolution of any Meta Quest headset so far. And it will have something called Pancake Optics. Do you even know what that is? No. I'm guessing it's like a stack of some kind. Because Maybe, pancakes, I like, guess. I don't or, know. Or flat. I don't mean, is it, is it flat in the profile of Maybe. it? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It's that's a, a I know word. the answer. Who cares? Yeah, that's a phrase I've never heard before. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe that's what that was, that little exploded thing. I don't. Maybe. Or is it that, where you can put the... 
It's like, I don't know. <laughs> you know what? We never have to know because I'm never gonna yeah. I'm never gonna touch one of these things. I mean, this is the one VR headset I've seriously thought about buying a couple different times because it's you know unwired, it's untethered, and oh sure, but like I'm gonna need to see some actual games. I mean, we're I gonna get to that though, right? But like, <sighs> so it's it's 40 percent slimmer than Quest Two. It has true touch haptics in the controllers. Um, the resolution they said so far, at least this what they believe is leaked out, is 4128 by 2208, which is a 30% increase, um, 120 hertz refresh rate in each eye, and then each of the screens inside the HMD are UOLED. I don't even, I've never even heard that before. Do you know what that is? Probably Ultra. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but again, it's coming this fall. For 500 bucks, and they haven't announced anything about the other models, if there'll be a cheaper one, if there'll be a more expensive one. Uh, they did say that they're working on two other HMDs at the same time. And my guess is those are going to be the higher end, more, even more expensive models than mm-hmm. the Quest 2. But here we are. I feel like the unique selling proposition maybe has disappeared because it was a $300 VR headset that was pretty damn good. That, to me, was what sold the Quest 2. Now it's a $500 VR HMD that's pretty damn good. Like, mm-hmm. that's untethered. Well, everything's more expensive now. Yeah, you're right. Everything is more expensive. Just think of it as made of eggs. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we're... It's so funny that how the news is now reporting that the grocery stores have been gouging us and, like, charging right. us more money when they didn't need... Like, who... I figured that out, like, two years ago. Mm-hmm. Like, hello? That was obvious, like, forever ago. So... They're gal- I mean, it's. I don't. Oh, I, but the free market. When people, say, blah, 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 yeah. Blah, blah, blah. When, when people say things are just more expensive, no, I don't believe that anymore. Like, I believe that they're gouging us, and they're like, oh, we could try to uh, use all inflation. You to, is, all you need to do is look at the housing market to understand that. Yeah. Yeah. The so rents anyway, around here, Jesus Christ. Yep. So anyway, Matt's concern was with games for this new HMD, and one thing I'll say, Matt, is I think they actually delivered on this. They showed like twelve brand new games, and for the first time. Maybe ever, Matt. I felt like we're starting to see games for VR that are real games. This is Asgard's Wrath 2. Um, this game looks like a legit... And then look, it's a God of War clone or whatever with a little bit yeah, of... I was going to say, like, okay, if you want two human in a, de- in a desert, <laughs> I guess we're kind of ready here. But. but we're finally starting to see some VR games that are legitimate games. And they showed like 10 or 12 other ones. I was pretty impressed with the software that they showed for this, to be perfectly honest. And that, I, haven't, I don't know if I've ever said that about any VR HMD. So it does appear that the software market for VR is starting to turn the corner maybe a little bit. I don't know. Ultimately, the proof will be in the pudding when we get to play these or not. (laughs) Um, But as far as like these press events for VR HMDs go, this was the first one that I watched where I was like, okay, like finally the games are starting to get to a point where I'm like, that's kind of interesting. I might actually want to try to play that or give it a go. Um, without it being like, here's Resident Evil with a VR mode. Like a, a, an original game made just for VR that's piquing my interest. That finally kind of happened with this. So will I buy it? Probably not. I still have the motion sickness problem that I don't know if will ever be cured. I just think it's just something that just I just I have, can't I have handle. an apathy problem that will probably never be cured. <laughs> that's true. Not for that kind of money. Yeah. 500 bucks. That's and a lot. you got to have it tied into your Facebook account still. I don't know. Did they change that? I think they changed that already for Quest 2, mm. if I remember correctly. Because that whole metaverse thing has just crumbled. Like, mm-hmm. Facebook or Meta has laid off, like, the entire staff that was working on all that stuff. Like, there was, like, a thousand people in the metaverse, yeah. like, at peak or whatever. I know a couple of people who've lost their job from that. I'm like, you were working at Meta? <laughs> like, I had no idea. Like, it was like... It was uh, it was certainly a thing. It was a dream, that's for sure, that never came to fruition. Notice, by the way, we're going to talk about the Apple headset later on as its own big topic, but notice there was no mention of Metaverse in that entire thing. No. no. Not one time. Or legs. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yep. Uh, let's see what else we got here before we get into the bulk of the show. Oh, another thing, too, is that do you remember that Meta was like working with Rockstar and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas for Meta? Yeah, I remember that. They didn't say a word about it. It seems to be going away. It's vaporware, it appears. Well, it was probably tied to the the definitive editions, and nobody wants to touch that anymore. Yep. So yeah, maybe right. All these they sold like crazy. Um, So anyway, you don't hear anyone talk about them. Yeah. No, no sign of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas for Quest at that big event. So my guess is, as Matt alluded to, is probably canned and not coming. Um, Yuji Naka, our good pal Yuji Naka. He uh, he finally got sentenced 
and he was sentenced to two and a half years in prison, Matt, wow. for insider trading. I don't. They don't know yet whether he's actually going to serve all that time, mm-hmm. but 30 months was his sentence. Man. Um, you think he was dealing marijuana or something? <laughs> in Japan, I mean, that's like a, that's a real that's a real. Oh, you go to prison for like the rest crimes. of your life for having weed in Japan. Um, so yeah, this is going to be his lasting legacy here, Balan Wonderworld or Wonderland. I never, I still can't Wonder remember world. to this day. It's a world. It's a, it's a world. <laughs> your body is a Wonderland. Yeah. Balan is a Wonder World. <laughs> yeah. So this is going to be his enduring legacy here. Is this god awful? <laughs> This, this, the frame rate stutters every time the cutscene changes yeah. changes camera angle. Yes, I shouldn't be laughing. Anyone going to prison or jail for thirty months? That's oh come on, that's an unforced error in a half. It is. Right there. It is still going to prison for thirty months sucks, but he earned it because as it turns out, it wasn't just like a one off instance. No, like, there was a whole network going of, on. It yeah, was like, there was. <laughs> why? Did, what did he think he was doing, Matt? Like to the point that you're like, did you make Milan Wonderworld just so you could keep your fucking contacts hot? On Maybe. That? Like, so you could keep the grift going yeah, with the insider you, trading. Like so you have a connected with, skill. Because yeah, exactly. you're like, you know what? I don't really care how bad this game is. As long as I'm working I'm still with making the people, money through this other thing allegedly yeah yeah and like it's, it's, well it's not alleged anymore he's no, I guess convicted not. well this this part of the scheme is just us right. making shit up but like <laughs> yeah but it would it would make more sense than thinking this was a good thing to do on its own yep <laughs> i can't like, say like i'd love to i want there to be an ulterior motive for this game's existence <laughs> frankly because like, it would it, i would respect it more yeah um, Rock and Roll four eight four five eight said that they changed it for Quest. No Facebook account needed, but you need a Meta account, which is the same damn thing, basically. Yeah, it's just more accounts, <laughs> and more shady bull crap from Facebook. More we- more compartmentalized places that store my credit card. Yep. that's great. Shocker. And then the final uh, smaller story from this week is something I wanted to bounce off of you to see if you think is a good idea. Um, rumors are swirling that a Psychonauts three is mm. on the way. And if you watch Game Face, you know that Matt and I both loved Psychonauts 2. Like, Mm -hmm. borderline Game of the Year candidate for me. I did some research. It appears, and people forget, that this game was multi-platform. Even though Xbox owned Double Fine at the point. It still came out. It still came out for everything. Because it was a, was it a fig thing? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was crowdfunded. Yeah. And it ultimately sold 1.7 million units across Mm -hmm. all platforms, which isn't terrible. And in fact, it is... Double Fine's best-selling game ever, Matt. Can you believe that? Yeah. I mean, I've played their games. They're they're all very good, but they're very niche. They are. Yeah, they're a little odd. And this game's odd. Oh, Let's yeah, be honest. Very odd. This franchise is very Tim, odd. Tim Schafer has always done odd. Yeah, you know which that. is why I love him. But it sold 1.7 like, like million. Tim Burton thing. Well, maybe it's Tim's. What's it, what's it with Tim's? Yeah, what is it with Tim's? Um, 1.7 million sold. Not terrible, but not great. Yeah, pretty it, good for... Psychonauts for a game that a sequel to a game that very few people outside of the, the core demographic have heard of. But Matt, you also have to remember that that game was in development for like six or seven years. Oh yeah, but also they're owned by Microsoft now, and it doesn't matter. So that becomes the question. So on its own, it sold 1.7 million. This property was available for other platforms. Would Microsoft take it away from those other platforms and make it a Game Pass exclusive? Yeah, I would think so. Because if no one's going to push back on it, well, guys, like, you couldn't do that with Psychonauts too because it was crowdfunded and it was right. people wanted on other platform. It was like you you were stuck with that. I'm thinking along the lines of Call of Duty, where yeah, this that's is, the line that Microsoft no. is drawing. It's the been only, available on no, other the platforms. The only line that Microsoft is drawing there is because Call of Duty is going to was a con- point of contention for the completion of the sale. Right. Like they're going to keep everything on their platform if they can. And here's my other question though. And is anyone outside of the their platform going to notice? Yeah. You know, as long as it's on PC, I think you're fine. Yeah, a game that sells 1.7 million versus one that sells 20-some million. Yeah. Big difference there. My question, though, is, is it worth, I mean, if it takes, let's say it only takes four years to make the next one, is it worth it? Like, do you green light that? If you're Phil Spencer, do yeah. you green light that project? I do. You do? Because I want to play it. Are you being, but you're being selfish. I yeah. mean, if, let's, I don't care. let's imagine that you're not being selfish and you're running a business that needs to well, what turn else, a profit. What else did you buy Double Fine for? Except like weird niche Tim's shit. crazy stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. We, but we, Tim's yeah. crazy stuff usually takes a year or two to make, not seven. <laughs> like, Yeah, well, now they got more resources and they got more support. So I think you can do a Psychonauts 3 in less time than it took them to do Psychonauts 2. I, th- I agree. That's why I said four years instead of seven. Is it worth working on something four years to put it on Game Pass? Well, I w- you'd have to like basically figure that out and be like, okay, can you do this in a reasonable amount of time? Can you do this in three years? Maybe? Yeah. Like, I don't think there's That any would make more sense. I don't think there's any reason you wouldn't be able to. Yeah. I mean, if you had a full team, you should yeah. be able to make this game in three years easy. 
full team support of the other Microsoft devs. You got a whole infrastructure there, hopefully. And for the record, um, I want Psychonauts three. Oh, like, yeah. don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I don't want it. Like, I want it bad. And they're start, they're starting to kind of push. You know, the other there, there's a new version or there's new something new happened with Stacked of all things, um, which I love. I like that game a lot. Uh, I remember he he was in the office once uh shortly after that came out and i was like uh i was like yeah my girlfriend loves that we've been playing stacked and and we you know we really like it and he goes well thank you for being the two people who like that game <laughs> <laughs> he's a great dude man i love tim he, yeah. he, he was he's, he's very self-effacing about you know how niche some of that stuff is um, Digital Reflux says F Game Pass. I want Psychonauts three. I I hear you. Selfishly, I want it too. We're just asking the questions of whether you know. Well, I, it think, makes I think he sense. means like he not he doesn't have Game Pass. He, on, he wants it on another platform. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I think that would not. Have, I think this would be a, a Xbox PC game. Mm. Okay, but I, I think anything that they don't think they're going to have to talk to the FTC about, right? Is gonna they're just going to end, gonna, up, gonna gonna end up on their exclusive. And it should be. Yeah, that's how it that works. It should be. I, I hate to break it to you, Digital Reflux, but that's the way it should be. Microsoft paid for this studio. It's absurd to assume that they would release multi-platform games going yeah, forward. Yeah, the second S two stayed that way purely because I'm sure there were contracts in place because of the crowdfunding that you just could not get yeah. out of. And truth be told, they ended up probably turning a profit on it because yeah, it was, was multi-platform. Yeah. So it all worked out in the end, I think. But um, I hope also, we get a second offer. Are those sales numbers including whoever got it from being backing? I don't know. I would think not. Probably not. But so that number is probably not that big. I mean, they had like almost a million backers. Really? I think so. Really? It was, it was a big. It was a big thing. Then I my mean, guess it probably does include it. Then. I'd have to look it up. That's a lot of backers. Holy moly! Well, that's not a purchase though. It's right. an investment. Yeah. So I don't think it would include that. Hmm. I mean, I'll, I'll remember that it, it's been cheap for a while too. I mean, yeah. all those units sold is not necessarily full price. That's true. Yeah. Um, but Psychonauts 2 is an amazing game. If you haven't played it yet, go play it. What are you waiting for? As Matt just mentioned, it's discounted at this point. You can get it for cheap. And it's yeah. definitely a game of the year worthy game. So um, they did great work. It took them a long time right, to do man, it. That was 24000 Okay, that was That's what I thought. Hours. I'm like, man, a million. That's a lot of that's backers. too many. Because you figure if you're a million and even if it puts in five bucks, that's a lot of money invested in a game to be developed. So, um, yeah. Hopefully we get Psychonauts 3 regardless of how it happens. I just... Wanted to ask those questions out of curiosity for the financial viability of it. Because this is still an X Factor with Game Pass. Like, how do you even quantify, like, whether it's worth working on a game for three years or five years just to put it on Game Pass? Like, how do you even know, like, if it goes, you release it and you add 100,000 subscribers? Is that, I don't know. I don't know. It's not our problem. It's, like, it's not our problem. It's not our problem. We just want to play great games. That's what it, what it all comes down to when it's all said and done. Uh, okay. Before we get into the bulk of the show, let's hit into chat. We've already... Been keeping an eye on you guys here for a while, but I want to go back and thank people who gave us Twitch Prime um, throughout this process here of the early parts of the show because we need it very badly, and I appreciate it very much, the people that are doing it. Um, Rosencrantz, thank you for subscribing at Tier 1. For some reason, I can't go all the way up to the top again, which sucks. So we missed some people who subscribed at the beginning of the show, unfortunately. Uh, we missed everybody who subscribed at the beginning of the show. Um, it doesn't really... I get Cinetyke... One Super Master Gamer, uh, R. Diana 21. Um, EDH 420. Toast 9. Rosencrantz. A lot. Um, it doesn't show me quite as obviously as it shows it to you. Well, here's a round of applause for all you folks. I really, really appreciate it. I don't know why y'all have stopped doing it. Uh, like, Bogdan SB. It's like when I put together the crawl for Pactor Factor, like I see all you guys. I see how many times you've done it. Some of you guys are like over 100 at this point. But I can see your streaks. And like we have people who used to do it, had streaks running for like 20, 30 months. Almost all of our longtime people who have been doing this are like just at one like, there's no streaks going anymore. So I don't know why y'all stopped doing it, but we really need you guys to do it. Like, it, it's a huge, it's not even like a bonus. It's like, I need it to break even on what we're doing here. So if you guys could maybe start setting those alerts again in your phones or whatever you were doing before to make sure you were doing it, I'd really, really appreciate it. We really, really need that money. And thanks to everybody who has continued to do it because there are some of you guys still who are on like 40 week streaks or 50 week streaks. Y'all are awesome. Um, oh, here's some more. Bogdan SB. Thank you for Twitch Prime. Some people getting in here late. 
Um, Lesteved dropping all the tier one subs. Thank you. Obviously, you guys know Lesteved is also the genius behind LS Cream. Um, and actually, we have a little bit of a change to our LS Cream sponsorship. We have a brand new uh, URL that you guys need to follow going forward if you want to help support Sifted with our sponsorship. Before that, here's our ad. LS Cream is a fine cream liqueur created by fellow gamer and sifter Stevens Charles. It's inspired by an ancestral recipe from Haiti called Cray Mass and a double gold winner for its original taste at the New York Wine and Spirit International Competition. LS Cream can be enjoyed on the rocks or as a mixer for drinks with its rich blend of fresh cream and neutral grain spirits with notes of coconut, vanilla, cinnamon, and nutmeg. It's great in coffee or to make espresso martinis. To learn more, discover amazing drink recipes, or to track down your own bottle using a handy store locator, head to creamls.com. That's creamls.com. Okay, so as I said, there's a new URL that you guys should go to um, when you want to check out creamls.com. Use creamls.com slash sifted. That way, Lesteved can track the people that are going to the website just from Sifted so we can have an idea how um, the, uh, the sales are working. Now, I'll say this. We get a lot of messages on YouTube on the archives of people saying, oh, I went and bought LS Cream because of your sponsorship. Maybe hard to get people to convert over to that stuff, but we'll see. Um, that's something that they requested and we're going to oblige. So head to creamls.com slash sifted. There's tons of awesome stuff there. There's drink recipes so you can make the awesome drinks that you just saw in the ad. Uh, there's the history of the drink. Listeved has an awesome history. This is a family recipe, which my family recipe is like pasta sauce. Mm. <laughs> How awesome is it that their family recipe is liquor? Um, you have an awesome family, let's step in. Uh, so anyway, head on over there. There's a store locator so you can figure out where you can buy it locally. There's BevMo links so you can order it online. And most importantly, it's just an awesome liqueur. If you ever drink Bailey's Irish Cream, stop drinking Bailey's and start drinking LS Cream. And with that, it's time for us to kick off Game Phase 345 proper. And we have a banger of a show for you guys today. We have two gigantic games we're going to talk about on today's show. First up is Street Fighter VI. As we said at the open of the show, my hand right now is still sore. Mm -hmm. When I walked in today, you said that your thumb was still hurting and you had not played the game today. Yep. It is, um, it's it's been awesome. Workout. I haven't been this into a fighting game in a really long time. I think the last one was probably Mortal Kombat 12, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I played 4 a lot. And played Mortal Kombat 9 a lot nine a lot um because it was like kind of the, the reboot and i played with some people the problem with the fighting game thing is either i'm in the local like local scene or i'm not playing with other people because nobody wants to play with me yeah um, i'm too good for like the casual people but i'm not good enough to hold my own against the pros <laughs> so i'm kind in of in no this man's weird, land. i'm in this weird middle ground I'm, i went to a party shortly after the the original mortal kombat 9 came out and we were, people were playing it, and so I sat down to play, and I was just wrecking everyone. And finally, somebody just turns to me and goes, you, you know this isn't fun for us, right? Yeah, and you're like, ruining our go, time. I'll go do something else. So, but. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, so we, a lot of us already played the beta because they gave us, like, three betas for Street Fighter VI. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not quite to the extent of Diablo IV where I'd played, like, 30 hours of it. But yeah, I played. Well, luckily, like, a match is is its own thing. That's true. So. Um, and this is a different type of game, and there's a bunch of different modes and things like that. Um, so it is different. But we all had kind of spent a good chunk of time playing Street Fighter VI before it even came out on Friday, um, and we even got to really sample almost all the modes. So the first one was the World Tour, which is like the single player campaign, and then they just put up like the battle arena stuff, and you can just go in and fight head to head mm -hmm. against people. And I jumped in on all of those and played all of those. Now we've had a chance to go through and spend a ton of time with the World Tour mode, which is the campaign mode. And the first thing I would say is I hated on it a lot when we talked about the beta um, because it's just really corny and cheesy mm -hmm. and weird. And once I started diving into this more, I liked it more. I could appreciate mm -hmm. it more. Um, but then I kind of hit the zenith with that. And then I got like six or seven hours into it. And I was like, I wasn't really enjoying it all that much anymore. <laughs> It's been a weird, like, 
sine wave for me of playing the world tour at first i hated it then i liked it and now i don't really hate it anymore i just it just failed to hold my interest after a little bit how what was your kind of take on it matt i like it i mean it's, it's silly it's definitely silly but it's like silly in the way that street fighter has always been silly yeah. uh and i mean you used to beat up cars by the way Let's, yeah oh you still do <laughs> you still do there's, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of demolition in this game yeah um and i still yeah i still enjoy it. it's 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 silly it's it's it doesn't take itself very seriously. It thankfully lightens up on the cutscenes after the after the kind of introductory yep. stuff. Like mm-hmm. early on, you're like, "Oh my god, Luke's talking so much! Like, how am I going to get through?" And eventually, like, it's just like you know, every time you meet one of the main characters, you have like a little cutscene introduction where you they be, you become their student, and then you don't really need to worry about it anymore. Um, and then you can I, start bringing in their moves and their yeah, abilities can, and adding of, them to your character, yeah, which is something the, you didn't really get to touch on that much in the beta. Yeah, one of the big things, because you don't advance that much, you don't get any more you know, masters, basically. But one of the things that's really interesting about this is not just that you can switch, as you get a different character's master, as a master, you can switch to their style, so you basically get their base move set. So right now, obviously, you're playing Chun-Li, Chun-Li yeah. which was also, I played Chun-Li for a long time until I got Ken's mm-hmm. and Ryu's and switched over that. I will eventually switch to Guile's, but I have not gotten to Guile yet. Um, but what you get, you get their, like, some of their basic special moves, so you can, but you can plug in anybody's special moves into your character, no matter whose style you're using. Yep. So, like, right now, I'm using Ryu's style, and his fireball, and his super, like, his level one super, but I'm using Chun-Li's level two super, and her, uh, her, um, spinning bird kick, which, thankfully, I mean, five to this, there was a period in Street Fighter where spinning bird kick was useless because it didn't knock down. Yeah. So you did the spinning bird kick, and even if you landed it, it was just a free hit for your opponent. Yeah, yeah. So now it's, it's much more useful. Um, and I've got, uh, I have also, in addition to Ryu's Fireball, I have uh, DJ's Fireball, the Air Slash, which is phenomenal. Now, Air, air Slash, you do it with light, it's a fake out. You do it with medium, it's a, it's the normal Air Slash. You do it with hard, it's, um, d- it's a double slash. Which screws the AI up and people up. Pretty yeah. And then I've got, I think I got the sure you can and like a couple other things. So you can, as, and then like aerial 100, uh, 100 leg kick uh, for, um, or, uh, for, from Chun Li. So like you can create basically, you can put a, a move on every, you know, so basically as each move for each like controller motion, you can just pick something as long as you yeah. have it in your roster. So you can just sort of build this crazy character. And then when you go into Battle Hub, you can use that character. You go in the middle of the Battle Hub and just like, challenge all covers yeah. and you just fight your avatars against each other and it's just good stupid fun because like everything's all fucked up yeah there's, there's no like, balancing like you don't the fight avatar against people. balances makes no <laughs> sense it's just like let's see what weird shit we've done you don't know what yeah. the hell you're gonna get and everybody's wearing like construction hats yeah i didn't know that was what the battle hub was gonna do the first time so i went in and i'm wearing i was wearing like this like like kung fu mumu and like like flip flops and a construction <laughs> hat yeah, and and glasses, and, I'm, and everyone else is just standing around in sweatpants and bare chested. I'm like, oh, I, I I'm didn't at the get, wrong party. I didn't get the memo for this one. I didn't. That's like you see the fantasy football commercials when the season's about to kick off, and the dude shows up at the door wearing like some scantily clad outfit, and he's like, oh, it's a different fantasy party. Yeah. <laughs> What's I put really on my a, robe and wizard hat? Like, What's really shocked me about the world tour mode is how big it is. Oh, it's huge. Not even just like the mode, it's like the world is gigantic. Like you can get on a plane and fly to these other countries. And now granted, when you get there, most of the time, it's just like a small area, whatever. You're you're basically walking around the stage from like the fighting game stage. And if you walk too far towards the camera, you leave. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But then Metro City is like big. Metro City is real big and there's another city that's decent size. Yeah. And there's like, it's so Um, big that like there, you can, there's fast travel, there's a bus system, there's a day and night cycle. Like you have, you can go to this one room and like change it from day to night and certain mm-hmm. things only happen at night and only happen during the day like holy crap man a, a subway system which yeah is, the subway system basically puts you in a little final fight mini game. yeah you have to, beat you have to up survive all, on the train yeah you have to beat up all the gang members on the on the, the whole train before yeah. or, or wait like four minutes four hours it yeah. seems like yeah um but it's like yeah it's it's, it's I there's can't believe here. how much work they put into this. Yeah, they, I mean, because it, it really is absurd. Yeah, like, well, there's the first. It's <laughs> the first time that like they've really done anything that competes with Mortal Kombat story mode. Yeah, and it's not as good, obviously, not, because yeah. um, Mortal Kombat story mode is more focused on the actual narrative, and it's mm-hmm. done by you know actual like you know a lot of the same people that do the 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 DC animated direct to DVD direct direct to video stuff write and produce a lot of the Mortal Kombat yeah, cuts. It shows. Yeah. So which is not you know very true, but. 
in terms of like actual stuff to do, this is comparable. <laughs> it's really insane. And it's not, yeah. it's, it, I mean, it's no dumber than like running around the graveyard, like unlocking stuff for combat points or whatever, you know? Yeah. Except imagine if the whole story mode was like that <laughs> dumb, you know? Now, I, I think it's rather charming. I, I, I enjoy it. Um, I enjoyed it for a while, I'm still, and then I, it, it wore out. Everything. I'm still, I still like it, and I like how it slowly. If you're a new player, or haven't played in forever, it slowly introduces you to each of the different characters, yep. and lets you try out different moves yeah. and like all that. And then you know, I mean, it's it's also friendly in the sense that if you go to the the the, the right side, there's you know, there's the training. And then there's like you know base advanced training, and then there's introductions to every character, and then there's combo trials for every character, and the combo trials are way better than they've oh, ever yeah. been. Oh yeah, the training Street, in this is amazing. Street Fighter's combo trials used to be like just like stupid human trick. Like I remember trying to get some of those done in four, and Seth Killian like just told me he's like don't don't waste your time. <laughs> he's like those are all just like none of those are things you're going to use in an actual fight. They're just like yeah. things you can do that the devs knew you could do, but like. Uh, certainly at least the basic and intermediate stuff on the combo trials on this they're all stuff you can use in actual matches right yeah, off the bat absolutely. like they're going to teach you really good stuff the training in this is amazing it's very Whether, well no done. matter how I mean you and I have been playing Street Fighter for 30 years yeah. over 30 years but if you've never played it like yeah. the training in this is awesome this is without any exception like by a light year the most complete fighting game Capcom has ever made oh yeah for like, sure it, like not even close. I, I, it's shocking to me that Capcom made this. Yeah. Like, it is so <laughs> far beyond anything they've... I mean, because they have half-assed yeah, yeah. everything except the actual gameplay for... So, I mean, these are the people that use Morrigan Sprite for 11 years. Yeah. Like, it, it's... And this mode just keeps going on and goes and, and goes on and goes. And, and, and it on. still has... Like, like, I did a thing, a side quest, where I had... To, there was a whole, like, little, like, movie cutscene where all these guys were doing Russian ballet, and then it turned into, like, a, a judo match. And I'm like, <laughs> that was all anime... Like, like, yeah. it's, it, they animated all that. I know. Like, I think about it. What, play in this mode, I think about it all the time. I'm like, who was the person that had to do this? Who was mm -hmm. the person that had to do that? <laughs> like, dude, I hate Blanca in this game, by the way. Blanca is... I, they, Blanca reminds me of someone we both know. He's the one character. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. He's the one character that I feel like they did a terrible job on for this game. They never know what to do with Blanca. I don't know and, why. And the other thing, I, I this is a conspiracy theory, obviously, but... Blanca was uh, Ono's favorite character, uh -huh. and I feel they're fucking oh. with him a little bit by doing that. What they did, I him. never thought of that. <laughs> you may be right, <laughs> but I do look. They provide so much more context for a lot of these mm -hmm. characters that you and I have been following for decades. Like, yeah, and all you I need feel to like know I'm is finally that, getting to know them. And it's also like it doesn't matter if you know anything about the previous quote unquote stories of the Street Fighter. Yeah. All you need to know is that all these guys that you recognize have been doing this forever, and they all know each other. Yeah, yeah, and that's all you need to know. No. Yeah, and it works. Yeah, and then the new characters are all introduced like a little more carefully. Here's your Akira slide yep. for, the, for the game. Yeah, um, I had to make sure that was in the B roll. Yeah, here's Jury. This shot right here is awesome too. <laughs> yeah, Jury. Jury is a lot of fun. Uh, she's she's definitely the best new character in Street Fighter since probably like Super Turbo. Yeah, she's around like, to stay for sure. She, she's definitely a, she fits right in. Yep. Um, some of the all the new characters in this are good except though. JP. JP JP doesn't fit, but he's a good character. <laughs> he like, is, he's, but he, he's, I haven't got my head around how he plays yet. But like, I, I've actually been trying to play him a good bit, but he just he doesn't fit inside Street Fighter. Like he, even his, he look, he's a King of Fighters character. Yeah, he, he yeah. looks like King, but he's like he's also Shadowloo, like some kind of Shadowloo guy we've never heard of before. Yeah. And even Guile's like, what the hell is that? Like, he's, yeah, he's like, where did he come from? And the thing is, with this, the way this game is set up, you learn about these characters in the World Tour mode. But you can also go to the more generic old school story mode for yeah, Street the, Fighter. The arcade mode has story, and it's for, it's specific to each character. It's like animated little, stills. Little animated comic yeah. like stories. And it's all prequel to the mm -hmm. World Tour. It basically sets up World Tour. Yep. Um, which is pretty cool. This is the battle hub you're seeing here, which I think is a really cool idea in concept, but ultimately to me it became redundant so you, you can go I think, I think we gotta wait until they start doing the tournament events in this Maybe. before we really kind of judge it because like right now it just feels like matchmaking with extra steps yeah uh, because they're trying to simulate an arcade like if you sit down at that someone else has to sit down at that machine to play against you yep and then there's like there's and luckily for me this guy does right away he's like oh there's somebody yeah I have not had a problem like it does like, there's a little map that actually shows you who doesn't have a partner and yeah. you can go play right then so it's basically like playing an actual arcade so they're trying to replicate the arcade experience there's a place for people to play like finals matches and like a tournament bracket screen so theoretically you'd all be standing around watching people like spectating so it kind of feel like a tournament yeah um, but ultimately you can go to a menu system where you just 
select and it just way it's way faster to match make and like so right. i i did this like once to just try it out and i had used it in the beta a little bit too but i just go to the menus and just set up casual or ranked and then like literally in that option as soon as you finish a match you get another match almost too fast like if you decide mm. you don't want to fight again sometimes you match up with somebody so quickly you, you're jumped into another match yeah, no the online works real well i mean i to me this is a different experience from um uh, from playing with uh, you know the the, the arcade mode, ma- but I don't remember what the name of the yeah, like, fight fight zone or the, yeah. the right side. Yeah, the it's one. the right side of the yeah. menu. Yeah, that's like if you're just gonna jump in. I will say that they've streamlined this as much as they can for how the battle hub functions. Like you're you have to pick a character as part of your profile, and that's the character you will be when you play a, yep. a, a game. You which, can which I didn't know. So change I, it. You can change it, but you have to commit to that character for as long as you're sitting down until you can come come out of it and change your character that way. So there is no character select screen. There's no stage select screen. So that streamlines it because you just jump right into the match. Yeah. So nobody needs to pick a character. Nobody needs to pick a control wait, wait, scheme. Before we go forward, I want to... What do you think this is, Matt? Let me, what? I'm going to rewind this real quick here. There's this weird pause. Watch. So he uppercuts me here in a second. And then JP pauses in midair while his cape is still moving. Oh, that's just, that's just lag. That's lag? Yeah. With the cape still moving? Yeah. Because it's that is that's some kind of rollback thing, I think. Interesting. It's use it's using that moment where no one has any control mm-hmm. to sort of catch things up. Gotcha. I think that's what's interesting. Happening there. Yeah, I noticed that's the only time it ever happened. It's very smart. It, it, this is a I, I played both wired and with Wi Fi, and I didn't notice a huge difference. Mm-hmm. Um, all the match I've been, played a number of matches, both in the 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 ranked casual match and in the battle hub. And uh, fighting ground is what it's called. Fighting ground. Yeah. They, they all they all have been fine, like really good. But you uh, can see here online over to the right, it just completely eliminates all the nonsense from the battle hub. It's just a menu that you can select and match up with people. Right, um, but like the battle hub, the experience of the battle hub is a different thing. Yeah, it'll be for play. tournaments, and it also is the one place where you can fight with your avatars yeah. as well. Right, you can play with your avatars. You can kind of hang out and mm-hmm. like talk to people, and like you can add people to friends lists and then play them in this mode too. Yep. Uh, there's there's retro games there, so like yesterday and yeah. they change every day. So yesterday they had Son Son, Final Fight, and Street Fighter Two, the original Street Fighter Two. You awesome. can sit down and play, and you can play either unlimited or you can play one quarter and compete for a high score. Uh, I have, I have the two hundred and fourteenth. Highest score on Street nice. Fighter 2 for the day. That's good. Um, That's impressive. Uh, you forget how much down. You can kill someone in three hits in that fucking Oh, yeah. Like, yep. Guile is unbeatable in that. Um, but uh, So that changes like every day or two, which is cool. And there's a bunch of different. Well, I think they have like 12 different games they rotate through. Um, you can go on one. There's one little extra stage where you can play the extreme battle with people, which is mm-hmm. like where they just are throwing like environmental. It's almost like what Mortal Kombat does, where they're throwing environmental things in, and like you can like bulls charge through the stage. And you have to jump over them and stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. Like, there's a lot of, and you can go up. You can actually play. You can DJ. You can go up top. And, yeah, I and saw play that. music. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't like, work very like well, a, but you like can do sel- it. There's like a selfie area. Yeah. Like, it's, it, you can buy uh, exclusive things for the avatar and like things. Like, like Point there's being, a lot of stuff there's in just there. so much crap in this game. It yeah. really is insane. Like in uh, almost any other Capcom fighting game, the fighting ground would be the whole game. Right. Yeah. Like, so you've got a complete Street Fighter game on the right side right. and two whole other things. Things that you could fill your time like with. Like this, this game feels like... Um, this game is on the level of like what Street Fighter V was two years after release. Yeah, like they took the lessons of Street Fighter V and ran with them. I like, do wonder what Onosan, how what he's feeling right now. I don't care. Seeing the, yeah. <laughs> like, I, they made a great. This is one of the best fighting games I've ever played. Yeah, that's what I'm like, saying. Like, and he wasn't there, so I'm wondering if he's like, damn. Damn, <laughs> like, I, did I, it. Le- I leave. Yeah. And I mean, like, there was all that concern. Like, I don't know what's gonna look. Well, it turns out it's gonna look pretty fucking good. Yeah, because they nailed this. Thing. This is the arcade mode stuff here we were talking about, where they yeah. have like the the comic book stills and. They're like prequel stuff, gives you backstory on some of the characters. Yeah, and these are pretty fun. And like, it's great because like you can do um, you can do five match arcade mode or twelve match. Yeah. So twelve match is obviously more like traditional arcade length. Yep. And you get more bonus stages in it. Yeah. But if you just want to see the story and get through stuff, you don't like a character very much. Play five matches, you're done. You get yeah. their art, you get their story mode, you're you're cool. Yeah. Like I, it's very it's so it's so smart. So much of it is so smart. Yeah. And that's not even getting me the actual fighting. Right. Yeah. And I, I think probably my big hang up with this game is that I don't really enjoy the world tour all that much. And it is the primary single player. Granted, you're right, it's way better than anything that's ever been in Street Fighter, but also to your point, comparing it to the stuff that Netherrealm's been doing, it, it falls mm-hmm. pretty short. Well, I don't think it falls particularly short in terms of what it's I mean, here's the thing. I keep thinking about it as like, you know what? 
th- I mean, obviously a little less goofy, but that's what Shenmue should have become. Probably. It, it it's tried a, to be serious. It's and- take, yeah. It's, take, <laughs> it's taking a lot of cues from Yakuza of yeah, all yeah. things. It does, this game reminds me a lot of Yakuza. Yeah, it's yeah. goofy. It, it's like if the... Go- I think I said that before. It's like if the goofiest Yakuza side quests were the whole game. Yeah, yeah. And I don't mind that. like, Because to, to me, World Tour, while it is obviously a lot of time, it's a time sink. Like, yeah. I'm level 36 or 37 or something. Yeah, I don't even and remember I'm what level I've been playing a lot. I'm, I'm like high 20s, I think. But, like, Something like that. it slows down a lot after yeah. a certain point. But, um, uh, and you can tell because I'm, like, almost to the top of the final skill skill tree or something mm-hmm. somewhere in there. Um, yeah. But, like... Uh, well, I mean, I've already t- filled out my skill tree. Oh, no, there's five of them. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Oh. You, you unlock more. Oh, I didn't realize that. Out. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, the, uh, that might be why you're uh, having trouble getting away from the, the random bad guys, because you can get skills that make the lower level guys not try to fight. Oh, because that's one thing, actually, I'm glad you brought that up that I haven't mentioned yet, is in the world tour mode, you have to run around these streets. And normally it's not a big deal. The streets are really wide. Mm. And there are enemies, the dudes with the boxes on their heads, they're just thrown into the open world to fight you, basically. And if right. you come across them, they run up to you and start the fight, or you can initiate it yourself. The point is, only trust your fists. Police will never help you. Yeah. And... <laughs> <laughs> they and won't. They stand around and won't let you go to the other side of the fucking map, but they just watch a guy with a cardboard box and they're to attack a little girl and nobody <laughs> fucking cares. The problem is, when you get into the alleyways, they're really narrow, and it's really hard to get away from the dudes with the boxes on their heads. And, like, I'll fight them and I'll kill them all, and then I'll turn around and I'll watch them repopulate. They'll jump down from the roofs of the buildings and jump back down into the alley. And yeah, I'm like, they, they've jumped in real fast. Yeah, like they repopulate and it gets annoying after a while. I'm like, I don't want to fight these guys anymore. Like, just leave me alone. Yeah, I just haven't had that. I just sprint past them and they, j- I've they, tried. Almost, they never catch me. I probably like, get past them maybe half of the time. And then some, mm-hmm. and I'll come around a corner, and there's one just standing right there, and they just swerve right into me, and off we go into another freaking fight. And yeah, the my, fights, mine are way dumber than yours. Really? Probably. I mean, if like I, like the level thirty plus ones are pretty fast, and they can catch me sometimes. Mm-hmm. But like anything like below my level, like I, I fight them, and I only fight, I, I only fight them if I want to. Basically. Well, the other problem too is that like they're generally pushovers. Like they're so easy to but beat. Right, they're a waste of time. Yeah. Well. yeah, and I'm like, I don't want to fight you. I just spam the same move over and over. Mm-hmm. I don't care about fighting them like intelligently. I'm too busy poke, hitting the triangle button to see what all the civilians are going to give me if i beat them in weird ways and then like oh you've got oh you give me like weird juice great we're gonna take that yeah and then the other thing too is that like the levels for the world tour mode are like spaghetti like they're a little metroid like like there's ladders that you find you find all these secret areas that you drop down into and then treasure chests everywhere yeah sometimes you end up getting in places that you don't belong and there's mm -hmm. like some dude that you got to fight this like level like 50 and you're like level 25 and he just whoops your ass you have to like do twice the damage to beat him like it's there are unexpected moments for sure um in the world tour mode that i found Mm -hmm. um that were good in some ways and bad in other ways but ultimately it did kind of just grind me down to the point where i wasn't really enjoying playing it anymore and that's when i just started diving into the fighting and so let's talk about the fighting engine in this because it's amazing it literally may be the best fighting game i've ever played as far as how it feels to actually fight and, and play the game um again it's been a long time since i really got into a fighting game but like the drive system in this very intuitive Mm -hmm. it's like a lot of those expert systems that extra layer that they put into fighting games like anymore i don't get into them because i'll play the game for like a day or two and i'm like okay i get it i understand how it works i can talk about it on game face this one i have been i have dived in and uh, like you know i've been going through the training and figuring out how it works and i've learned and mastered like a huge portion of the fighting engine still not 100 percent though Mm-hmm. Like there's still some of the stuff oh, no, that I still can't pull stuff. off. Yeah. yeah, there's always advanced stuff. Like the the thing about this this game is the drive system. You can incorporate that immediately into your gameplay. Yep. It's not like the the you know, the focus dash can't focus dash cancel stuff in four or whatever you call the secret the the, the hidden extra system thing in five that I don't even remember the name of. But it like it's really good because like you under it intuitively you can understand what the drive systems are for you understand what the drive parry is for you understand what the drive uh the, the drive cancels do like that those are harder to pull off but like or just is the drive i can't remember the official name of the basic drive hit thing. yeah 
Um, and you understand how to counter it. Like if you if you see that yeah. graffiti pop up, hit your own, and you'll counter them. Like, yeah, you know, it's it makes like sense. you do like a parry, and yeah. then once you do that parry, that opens up a whole new set of mm-hmm. abilities, and that to me is where it starts to get challenging, where it starts to get hard. The, the timing for me, I'm not quite there yet. I can do some of the stuff, but I can't do the higher level stuff still. Well, following up on a on a on an advantage is kind of the key to getting better at any fighting mm-hmm. game. So that's that makes sense. But yep. I just that's think it's, the hump I'm still trying to get. It's over. opposed to like when you see someone do stuff like that, you understand instinctively kind of how you should have to be able to do that whereas like if you saw someone do like some of the high end like fo- focus dash cancel stuff in 4 you're like you would never know how to do that because yeah. you have to look up at what what frames it works on and yep. how and like you got to risk yourself on it is it's still risk reward but it's much more user friendly and then like there's still very high level things to do with it that like newbies aren't going to be able to do so the pros get something cool out of it but like yep. you, you don't feel like you're missing part of the fighting system because you're not advanced in you know in the lab every day yeah because all you have to do is hit that left shoulder button and you can initiate drive even the most novice player can at least take part in at least part of the drive system with very rudimentary knowledge of how to use it so I agree with you. I think it's it's the system that they've designed here. It scales across skill level like big time, um, and you can. And I think once you start using the drive system in its most simple forms, the other learning starts to pile on and layer and dovetail until next thing you know, like a day and a half later, you're an entirely different player than you were. Mm-hmm. Like I am getting so much better at this. Like when I first started fighting other character, like other players. I would probably win one out of three matches. Now I probably win 50% of the time, and I'm hoping in another three days I'm getting up to 60% of the time. Mm. Like, I, I'm, have, I am noticing a real progression for yeah, my I have, skills. I have only lost one match online. Which is so insane. Far. And that's because that was my first one because I didn't realize it defaulted me to modern. Yeah, I don't... Because I, I, the first online matches I did were in Battle Hub. And it obviously def- you you have to set your character and your control scheme there before, and I didn't know that, so I just sat down to play a game at one of the machines, and it gave me Luke with modern controls. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna lose this one. Like, <laughs> so I'm not gonna, and I switched over, and then I, you know, I've been fine. And slowly, I'm fighting better people, because, especially like with the ranked, as they as ranked learns how good I am. Yeah. So okay, now I'm gonna start. Uh, that streak isn't gonna last that much longer, probably, but because there have been some tight fights. Yeah. So, but like in like Battle Hub, it's that's like, crazy. You haven't lost. I mean, I think I mean, the matchmaking in this is not great. <laughs> like, mm. they, they could make the matchmaking in this better, I think. Like, and you're right. The more data they have, the better it's going to become. So yeah, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. early day. I haven't, have a clear I haven't picture played of how hundreds good you are. of matches or anything. You know, I've, yeah. I've, just, I've been playing a few dozen. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's got to learn that I have good win. You know, rank, I mean, rank, honestly, Matt, once you've played 50 matches, it should have a pretty good idea of how good you are. 50? Yeah. 15. Yeah. Um, but I'm saying once you get to 50, it should have a good idea. Right. But yeah. I'm not there yet. Yeah, yeah. But I'm already moving up. But also, I mean, the, I'm kind of close to that. I've probably, I don't know, fought thirty or forty. I'm guessing. I've fought more in Battle Hub. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't done as much in. Uh, like I enjoy the 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 social aspect of that in a weird way. But I haven't seen a lot of close matches. It's like either I kick the shit out of somebody or they kick the living crap out of me. Like I've I haven't had a, a lot of nail biters. I've had a few. Like, yeah. um, it de- it really depends who can figure out or download you. Like in a couple of couple times, like. Especially with the rematch stuff, because you know, with like rematching in Battle Hub, it was it was like one guy I played who like I beat the hell out of him in a first match, and then he came back and beat me first round next next match. I'm like, oh, did he figure me out? Yeah. And then no, he didn't. No, he just got lucky. Um, <laughs> he did not get lucky. He I I had to change some things up. Oh, like okay. you got you know as as Alex Valle says, first round is data. Well, that's the other thing about the Battle Hub is that there is no matchmaking. You're mm-hmm. sitting in an arcade machine. People can scope you out and be like, oh, this dude's only fought three matches. I'm going to sit my ass down and beat his ass. Like, there's nothing that Capcom is controlling there to keep people from playing you that are no, way it's, better it's, than it's you. It's literally an arcade. Game. It is an arcade. It's an arcade. Yeah. People can just sit down Which and is, play. again, why I try to stick to the menu option instead of the Battle Hub more. Yeah, I, see, I like the arcade thing a little bit because you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. It's like and a box you, of And chocolates. you never know. Like, I mean, I learned the hard way early on that I'm like, okay, I... I went down to the Avatar. Then I'll see what this works. And I played like some guy. Uh, I played my fr- I played Andrew a little bit, but I also played like, other people. And then that's when I realized, okay, maybe I should go back to the World Tour and unlock the drive system yeah. before I start trying to play yep. people who can <laughs> do the drive. Because if yeah. you don't have that, it turns out you're at a slight you're disadvantage. In trouble. Yeah. <laughs> a slight one. <laughs> what is your favorite new character, Matt? Oh, like f- to play or like design wise? Either or. I think design wise, my favorite is Kimberly. Okay. Uh, the the graffiti artist. Yep. I think this to, game is just slathered in hip hop. Yeah, by the way. To play. Oh yeah. To play. I'm not very good with him yet, but I like Jamie. 
Okay. Because I, I haven't like, played with Jamie yet. I actually. like a I like a drunken kung fu character who yeah. is not an old man. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's cool that he's like. <laughs> you don't have to be old to be drunk. No, I think he's I think it's cool that he's like cool, like yeah. he's young and cool, and like he's a hot young dude who does drunken kung fu. Yeah. Like, um, I think uh, JP has potential, but I don't have my head around him yet. I've I think been playing him. I think they're all just because he's so out of character for Street Fighter. I've been... I think I think uh, Manon is very good. Like she's a different. You know, yeah, like Judo her. makes her a different character. I'm not very good with her, so I'm probably not going to play her. Too too much mm-hmm. but like i think she fits real nice um really the only one i have kind of like eh, on is lily i'd agree um, yeah but like or wait no who's the amazon girl marissa oh marissa the the big wrestler the, yeah the, the italian pancrat yeah, yeah. yeah i like her i don't i don't I don't like that her hair is Magneto's helmet. Yeah, it's a little. But weird. like, otherwise, I think she's a cool character. I, she's not. I'm not. I'm not a grappler player, but it's like. Yeah. But she's got some cool ideas. Um, she's very funny. She's like the, the world female tour Zangief. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's her big goal. She wants to fight Zangief. Right. Uh, and I'm like, I can respect that. Yep. Um, <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, the heavy's <laughs> moving were, in. Apparently, they were done watching there, <laughs> ready to play. participate. Um, no, so uh, I, I, they're all they're all real good. Um, yeah, there's not really one that stands there, out. Yeah, there's but... no loser. I mean, I I think uh, is it Lily is the the little girl the the, the Mexican. Uh, like I think she's related to T Hawk. So Not the graffiti artist. No, she's she's the no one the native. The, she's the, a Native American boomerang. with the yeah. maraca things. The big yeah. boomerang, yeah, yeah. maraca thing. Yeah, she whooped my ass when I fought her against the computer. Man, I could not figure her out. Yeah, she re- actually reminds me of uh, Nakaruru from uh, yeah. Samurai Showdown. Yeah, a little yeah. Bit. I mean, I'm sure she's a cool. She reminds character. me of some characters from Monster Hunter, actually. Oh yeah, there's some. Yeah, th- those weapons do kind of look uh-huh. like that. Um, I don't know. That, uh, I I find her. I don't. I'm not interested in playing as her, and she is very annoying to play against. No, oh, she whooped me um, when I fought against her. She uh, AI. As, once people get better at her, like online, I have a feeling she's going to be like my new can. Because my my weak character against character is Cammy. <laughs> For whatever reason, Cammy has always been able to like confuse me. Uh huh. Like no matter what, like I yeah. will, I will get hit by that uh, cannon drill every fucking time. Like, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like 30 years later, and I'm just like I don't know. I, <laughs> I can't stop about her mix ups that I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> figure I haven't figured out in a quarter of a century. Yeah. Um. My main character is still Guile. Like I've been playing Guile as a main since four, and he has a lot of cool new tools. And like the other thing is like when you play those character introduction things, even the existing character characters you've played for thirty years, like they've got a bunch of cool new ideas. Like Guile has a way to interrupt his is you know his his low roundhouse. He he has a really good like low medium combo that can combo in almost anything you want. Like he's got all these different tools now that can get him around a lot of his old weaknesses, and that's really cool. Uh, admittedly, some of that might have been in later Street Fighter Five stuff that I just didn't play because I really dropped out of Street Fighter Five. Yeah, I think most people did. Early. Yeah, um, like I play. I usually play Ken a lot, but I haven't been able to connect with him in this game for some reason. Ken is weird in this one. I don't know why. Um, I think they only changed him up a fair amount, and he's supposed to be depressed. So <laughs> he is, he is <laughs> kind of broody. He's, he's you know he's sad dad in this one. Um, one of my mains too is Blanca, and while I don't like the look of him, his the way he plays has pretty much remained the same. Yeah, Blanca is, is a pretty consistent character. I was able to jump in and play pretty well um, with him, like right Chun-Li, away. Chun Li, I've been playing. I, yeah. I played as Chun Li's style a lot in World Tour mode early on because you get her like second, and so she was sort of my go-to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this game is so bizarre, man. Like it it's just a, so Met- weird. Metro City is a strange place. It's uh, like uh, I don't even know how you think of stuff like this, like. There's a great there's a little side quest where this guy sent me to like destroy a bunch of barrels and yeah. you destroy the barrels and like there was a there was a note on the barrels and it says scheduled for pickup please do not destroy but this is Metro City rest in peace barrels. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's a lot of final fight in this game. Yeah. Like, there's, like there's characters from Final uh-huh. Fight that show up. At one point one the of big the big gym is Hagar. Big gym is that Hagar's dead apparently? I didn't know that cuz it's Hagar Memorial Stadium. Oh, I didn't realize Mike that. Mike Hagar Memorial so he's he's dead. Like he's <laughs> I'm like, what happened to Hagar? Are we ever oh, gonna man. find out? What, like, I didn't know that. I mean, if, yeah. if that happened in another final fight, I missed it. Um, like a couple other characters, like, like uh, the the blonde, like first boss of final fight shows up as a gang leader. Yeah, yeah. Um, so does uh, uh, Retsu. Some crossover. One the, Retsu, yeah. one of the guys from Street Fighter One, is a side quest character in yeah. this. Like, there's a bunch of deep cuts in this. Yeah. Like, it's a celebration of Street Fighter. It really is. Here. Yeah, it's a kitchen sink approach to and be the, sure. And I love when everybody's just like, "Oh, you might want to meet that weird guy who wanders around all the time throwing a fireball." Like everybody knows Ryu, but doesn't want to mention him in right. case he shows up or yeah, something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> 
Yeah, I've had a blast play in this game, Matt. I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, it's been a, a nostalgic in a lot of ways, yeah. while still feeling new and vibrant. Yeah, it's like a weird balance of both of those things, which almost yeah. nobody gets right. Yeah. So like, yeah, I I can't believe I'm saying it. like, kudos, Capcom just killing it. They are killing it right now. And like every and it's area. paying off too. Like financially, Capcom's doing yeah. really well. Like just the like the only thing I could say is there's like, um. Doesn't look amazing at times. Like, yeah. And I understand that part of that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening. Yeah. There's so many people running around in that Let's thing. Let's be honest. Capcom's never really made a game like this. An open no. world, like, action adventure style game. Scale, <laughs> like, yeah. And like everybody, all the bad guy, all the guys that attack you have cardboard boxes on their head. I assume because they don't have to render different faces yeah. for everybody. They have to render just a cube, <laughs> and they have to make that later. They have to all look different. But they made and, it like part of the story. Like there's a whole I thing. Know. Like one yeah. at one point, like the I think is it Mar uh, Marissa who like knocks the box around so the guy can't see and right. punches him in the face. <laughs> it was yeah. Like it's got a sense of humor about itself that kind of makes the shortcomings of the world tour more mode kind of endearing a little bit. Like a little it's, bit. It is endearing in a weird way. Yeah. And then if you really get tired of it, you can just always go over to the fighting grounds and just sort of play. Which is what I've done. Fighter. I've stalled on World Tour and I just go over and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna get better at the game now. Well, that's the other thing is like World Tour is so like kind of <coughs> World Tour is so kind of self contained and self explanatory yeah that you could go back to world tour in like a month and you you wouldn't need to like catch up on what it yeah, was yeah it's also yeah. not complicated it's no, not one it's of those very, things you're like i don't know where to go next it's like, very easy to play yeah and like it's like all you need to worry about are you in the right location if not go to a different location if, yeah. is it day or night if it's not go, you know, go to the room and night. change yeah. the, the night cycle yeah it's all very much laid out there for you yeah yeah, Even the no rudimentary puzzles are sort of like, now maybe you should enter that number you found into your <laughs> message thing. It's like, oh, yeah, I get it. Thank you. Yeah. My first RPG. Cool. Yep. So overall, Street Fighter VI, the bee's knees. It's yeah. a really, really great fighting game. It's going to be interesting to see the rest of this year because we have Tekken 8 coming. We have Mortal Kombat 1 coming. It's going to, this, it's great it's to a have a year, game year where we're going to have like, a fight over the best there's gonna, fighting there's game. It's going to be an actual best fighting game category this year. Like we may have a real discussion over in our game of the mm -hmm. year awards over what the best fighting game is for this year, which is something we haven't done in yeah. a really long time. And then you run into the whole thing about like, is, is the best fighting game, the best fighting game, right? Or is it the best package, right? The best produced game yeah. is it because the I'm going to bet, I'm going to bet mortal Kombat is going to be a slicker package. Yeah. Than this in the, in, in an overall sense, but is it going to be a better fighting game? I cannot imagine. It's hard to imagine that be. happening. Like, this is, and you know is, me, I'm gameplay first guy, so yeah. you know where I'm going to lean. I mean, fighting games, I tend to be that too. I mean, I, I this is one of the best fighting games I've ever played. It's really like, good. This yeah. thing deserves its scores. I probably me. wouldn't give it a nine. High eight probably is where I, I would, would fall. I would give it nine point five. Wow. Right up there. I would. This is this is one of the pinnacles of the genre. It's really good. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I'm. I still there. I don't know. There's other fighting franchises that I, if we were to get a new one, I would assume I might like more. Mm -hmm. Like Virtua Fighter, if they put out a new one, it was oh, really I good. Love, I mean, Virtua Fighter is my favorite three D fighting series. I would. I would um, do nasty things. But I have a feeling that franchise is dead. A, yeah, I don't think that's gonna. I don't happen. think that's ever gonna happen. But this is great. Don't also, get me wrong. I'm all not the people it. that made Virtua Fighter great are gone. Yeah, that's true. Like, I don't even know where Sega have where to you assemble. Start now? Sega have to assemble a brand new team to do that. And who even who even knows how to do that except the people that are already making Tekken? That's true. You know? Yeah. So that's two enthusiastic thumbs up from Game Face for Street Fighter VI. Mm -hmm. Let's go check out chat. It doesn't feel like a lot of you guys are playing it. It doesn't seem like a lot of you guys are talking about it as you. We don't have a huge fighting game. It crowd. doesn't feel that way actually. Um, Sneaky asked, does it do a good job introducing everything to new Street Fighter players? Is it hard? Um, I think we already talked about that it's it is really great for noobs. Yeah, it's got a lot we of good We didn't even mention how it automates some like really hard moves. You can just press a single button. Yeah, the, the, and... the modern controls, I don't, I, I'll be honest, I don't understand how the modern controls work very well. Like they're, they're kryptonite to me. Um, but I assume if you don't already have 30 years of muscle memory from the six button controls, like it'd probably be fine. Um, I really can't tell you. Um, Vincent, is Capcom the best third party these days? It's up there. Yeah. I mean, now I mean, you've seen how Ubisoft has fallen. Between this and uh, all Resident the remakes Evil, that they're doing and Monster and Hunter. Monster Hunter. Um, I don't even like Monster Hunter, but I can. But you, you got to respect, respect it, it, right? Yeah. Um, we got uh, you know Dragon's Dogma coming up. I mean, there's yeah, like just in terms of consistency. Pharaoh Doll says. Uh, or not, Cirque says Guile is my kryptonite. 
I think a lot of people feel that way about Guile because Guile's, someone Guile's who's good with character. Guile, man, is hard to handle. That's all there yeah. is to it, man. It can be very frustrating because you can't jump in. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a zoner. He's one of the best zoners in the history of the genre. I will say, yeah. though, that just from my dabbling with JP, JP might be better. Really? Like, I've seen JP manhandle a couple of Guiles online. I can like, see that. He has he a is, lot of moves that no keep joke. that keep people away. It's hard to get in and on. One him of for his, sure. crit, one but of his, once you do get in on him, he's toast pretty but much. But one of his super arts can hit you from across the screen yeah, yeah. as you're juggling. It, yeah, uh, it comes up from the ground too. A he's lot gonna, of gonna uh, watch and see. I think JP is gonna be one of the early tournament favorites. Like I, well, you're gonna see some shit with that character. It's possible. Um, what else we got here from you guys? Um, uh, AJ the Legend Watson, who always asks the best questions. Do you think Capcom has something up its sleeve by using the open world assets in this game to possibly make a new IP? I mean, to your point, Capcom hasn't really made open world games unless you count Monster Hunter. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just not really in its purview. Yeah, it, it very slowly kind of dips its toe and it took Monster Hunter how many games to get yeah, to before it went really kind of open be considered world. that? Yeah. yeah. Do I think this engine can handle that? No. No, I mean, like, maybe an updated... Like, you, the pop-in on this is real noticeable. Yeah. Especially in, like, the big, like, Times Square area. Yeah. Um, but it's, it does the job just fine. Like People are I, saying no Tekken 8 this year. I thought for I sure think, it was coming no, this year. No, it's up in the air. Oh, like, really? I, 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 they haven't said for sure, but, like, I would not... I mean, I didn't put it on my my fantasy list for a reason veritas says i'm not, i'm playing it right now that's why i'm not talking lol all right yeah, fair enough man <laughs> um Arabus jones it looks cool and i'll get it but diablo won this face off for now okay the game's always yeah. gonna be there man it's not going anywhere and we're about to talk about diablo 4 and you'll understand that we completely get where you're coming from a contano reminds us that dragon's dogma is yeah. open world that's a good point yeah although it's kind of open world in a weird way that like feels like an extension of what monster hunter was doing basically it's monster hunter without loading because mm -hmm. the areas are pretty yeah. small yeah and you're kind of running paths it's a little bit like god of war 2018 god of war ragnarok a little bit yeah a little more open than that I would yeah say. outside of like the the, the you know, obviously it doesn't have the big open water section yeah you ride a boat around but yeah, no, it's, I mean, Dragon's Dogma is also very weird for Capcom. It's, it's, it's a very unique Capcom game. Yeah. It feels Capcom once you kind of get around the jank. But like, and you can see sort of the, the pedigree of of some of that. But like, you know, Dragon's Dogma is such an interesting game. Like, mm -hmm. there's nothing else quite like it in terms of how all those weird pieces come together and form this unique hole that you're either going to love or hate. A lot of people are about to find out with Dragon's Dogma yeah, too. Well, they people should go, they should go pay $5 during the Steam Summer Sale and get the, the original with the DLC, because it only comes, I think, with the DLC thing, which is basically like a giant dungeon. Yeah, yeah. That you just delve down after you've done the main game. There are tenets of that game that Matt and I can guarantee are going to be in a sequel. For oh, sure. for sure. And if you don't like Absolutely. those, it's going to be a deal breaker for you. Yeah, I think it will be smoother than that, because the first one, I mean, the jank is real. It is, for yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so much fun. Once mm -hmm. you get like in the groove and you kind of figure out what you want your character to be... And there are no real bad choices, although the arcane archer is the best best character class in the game. Like that, that is you are god with a with a magic bow. Yeah. Or, but if you even just want to be like a straight up sorcerer, like there's no bad choices in that game. Yeah. Like they, they do a real. It's one of the of all the games I've played that have like open world and you know be a different class and mix your classes and hybrid class, like all that kind of D and D stuff. I don't know. I can't think of another game that is more friendly to doing what playing whatever class you want to play. Yeah, there are there are no bad classes in that game. Well, we are about to talk about Diablo Four. Yeah. Well. <laughs> speaking of bad classes. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's two thumbs up from Game Face for Street Fighter Six. Excellent fighting game. Hard to imagine that there'll be one that's better, mm -hmm. at least for the actual fighting. In yeah. 2023. There you go. Time Zinni says Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen is under five bucks on Steam right now. Go get it. Go, go grab that. Yep. Or, or if you're not playing Street Fighter. Yeah, you could save yourself $70. Later yeah, it's on. a lot cheaper than Street Fighter. I'll, <laughs> I'll give it sure. that. Okay, let's move on. We've teased it enough. It's time to talk about Diablo 4, uh, the game that weirdly just came out today for most people. Yeah. I feel like I've spent a lifetime playing this game already. Yeah. Because I played the beta for beta, 30 access, hours or 20 some hours. And like the server smash. And then there was the server. I actually, I don't, I did not jump back in for the server smash. I only played the first beta period. Mm -hmm. um, and now I've played it again. And the first thing that really struck me, Matt, is how long it took me to complete what I had already completed in the beta. I played this game for like a day and a half, hardcore, before I finally got to the point where I started playing new content. Um, yeah, that beta. It gave you a lot. It's unreal. But, you know, I remember when I'm playing the beta, I'm like, why would they give me so much? 
And now I realize because the game is gigantic. Yeah, because they, they barely gave you anything. I mean, literally, we barely scratched the surface with that 20-some hours that we played in the beta. This game is just ginormous and almost at times, like, overwhelming. But the one thing I did like about playing the beta was that I played the ranged class in the beta. Actually, I played, what was it, the, not the scout the rogue, maybe. Rogue. I don't think it rogue. Maybe it was rogue. I can't remember the. It was name the class where it had both. Yeah, ranged I know what you're talking about. It's the it's the and melee the, subs- the, the successor to the Amazon. Yeah. And all that. Yeah. And so I played that for the beta, and now I jumped into the final game. I've been playing the Necromancer, mm-hmm. and I'll admit, I think I liked the ra- the rogue better. <laughs> the, playing as the Necromancer, I felt like it got repetitive pretty quickly. Well, the Necromancer is is a you know pet classes are always going to be like that to some degree. I do like the flexibility of what you can how you can decide what your necromancer is doing yeah. when your minions are running around. So like your your uh, style seems to be you know, drop the corruption stuff and it's then the rogue swing, swing saying, at them. It's a class rogue and swing at them with the scythe and like. So I have never used my scythe. I have a uh, a blood boil ability that like pulls blood out of the out of the enemies and re- restores my um, health. Not my, my not my health. It restores my uh, mana. Oh. So that then I can use the mana to throw blood spikes at guys, and each blood spike that sticks in a different enemy makes the next blood spike more powerful, and then I have a slowdown circle thing that makes them vulnerable to it, and then I can make all the corpses explode and kill everybody that way, because the corpse explosion does not cost mana. Yeah. Um, The skill trees in this are insane. You can literally, I mean, this character, like, so you can see how I'm playing the Necromancer. You heard Matt explain how he's playing the Necromancer. They're con- yeah, very different characters. Completely different yeah. in how they're played. And both of us, obviously, having no problem making progress through the game. No. That is, to me, is really the strength of Diablo 4. Is that you can really, even within each class, you can find seven or eight different ways to play that same class. Yeah, it's very easy to find things that are like, that feels like it just should synergize, and it does. Yeah. Like, I'm sure there's better better and worse ones, obviously. I'm sure there'll be min-maxing to be done. But, like, uh, overall, I feel like like whatever I want to try, I can try, and it works pretty much how I expect it to. And if I like it, I stick with it. If I don't, I pick something else. Like, it's... Yeah. And it feels better than, the, than three sort of free association thing because it just feels less limiting and it, it it's, it's simultaneously it's less limiting and it feels more like a choice yeah that in this one like, yeah i'd agree like they this is much more inspired by diablo 2 in terms of progression character building and just general design and it is wonderful for it yeah it is, it is a re- beautiful return to form if you didn't like diablo 3 and i did like diablo 3 but i just felt like it was a little something it was it just didn't quite feel i didn't right play it very much neither did i i, I played it I like finished the it. week it came out and i never really went back i didn't finish it either i never yeah. went back and i will finish this game oh for sure this is <laughs> this is one of the easiest to play games in terms of just how smooth it is i get yeah like it's like it's 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 like there's no friction to it at all it's just it's like i can just play this and never worry about like i i it's <laughs> I can't describe it really. It's just, it's like, it's so it simple. Does, it's nice. Yeah. It feels good. It did force me into complacency though, because as I said, like playing the Necromancer, it does start to get repetitive because I didn't need to change what I was doing to make progress. Mm-hmm. I never got to a point where I, was, I hit like a loggerhead where the game is telling me, Shane, what you're doing isn't working anymore. It's time for you yeah, to go well, back into that skill tree and look at a different way of doing things. So I just kept plowing well, forward. Like to, if you ask me, that would be bad design for this kind really? of game. Yeah, that's not how you gotta you build your character to work a certain way, and that's how they work. It, like, but you, know, became, you should never have to reinvent your character because the, ga- the game throws a weird thing at you like that. It just became repetitive a after broken, a while. I mean, Maybe well, that's, a, that's my own that's flaw these games. that I haven't just gone in and like he's been like, you know what, I'm gonna mix it up to make it fun. You yeah, know? I mean, you can do that if you want, but like, the game should never force you to do that. If you are, it enjoying, does. It, if like, you're enjoying how something's working, you should be able to keep playing that. Yeah. And look, it does layer stuff on. So, for example, as you can see, if you're not familiar with the Necromancer, he summons stuff. Like, yeah. if when you first start, you can summon, like, these and skeletons. And you can summon all of them, not, like, three where you had to pick between skeleton warriors or skeleton mages or the golem at one time. Everybody can be out at once. You can see. Everyone can be out at once. It's great. He's got his army back. Fantastic. I've got a little army following me around. And yeah. all you have to do is you have to find, you have to kill an enemy, and then you can spawn Love. it from that dead blood spot. 
and then you have an, a, a pert, and then yep. you kill two, and then you spawn from the. And next thing you know, you got your army rolling around with you. And, and you got a you got a handy little thing. If you see little green numbers down at the bottom, yep. and then right, almost in the center there, that's your numbers of how many of those you can have. Yep. So every time, all you don't need to look at count them manually. You just look at that thing in a big you know big furball fight, and like there you see the ones gray. You you're missing one. Yep. You're, you got you got to raise more. Like that, it's that's great. It's yeah, fantastic. It, it's it's so good. And that's really what this game it does, man. Like I was talking about Street Fighter having tons of options, layer and stuff, and dovetailing. This game is like dovetail the freaking game. Yeah. Like there's like there's so many things where I'm just like, oh, I wish I could. Oh, you you can do that. You, yeah. you thought of that. Okay. Like, there's so it feels like the developers and especially the UI designers are so far ahead of you yep. in this game. Like if you oh did you want that? We saw that coming. We knew you were gonna want that. It's, it's like right managing there. the stuff that you summon as a necromancer. Like that menu is very you know it's very intuitive yeah. very easy to understand is this game in general it's it's almost overwhelming all the stuff in it but the way everything is laid out it's never intimidating yeah it's so friendly yeah for something that's about demons and hell and yeah. it's so friendly <laughs> like yeah um how do you feel about the story it's fine it's better it's yeah it's better it's, Lilith is an interesting villain. Like, uh, I mean, how many times can you do the same? You know, demons are taking over the world mm -hmm. thing. Um, yeah, it's certainly there's some nuance. Yeah, you I meet mean, she, some of her like lovers and things like that that yeah. add a little some new wrinkles. I mean, she, she's a cool villain. Like the scenes with her and how she sort of like she approaches things in a different way from like Diablo or Bale or or uh, what's his name? Who was the, was a who was the other bad guy? Az Azathoth or whatever? Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it, actually. Um, I could spell it, but I can't pronounce it. And it's like, she's just a different angle. And she got, you know, she has that weird twisted, like, I'm actually doing this out of love. Right. I created this world. And like, yeah. you know, and, and you're the descendants of my children. So then there's that kind of yeah, inherent corruption thing where it's sort of like it. Cause One thing never... that's a little weird is like, you run into people in the world and they're like, oh yeah, she just walked by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're like wait a minute like she was just here you missed her i know it's so funny like she's just like walking around the world like you would think that mm. she's so powerful she could just like appear somewhere or like well, fly she can, or she can but she, <laughs> but she prefers to walk it's weird. because she wants to see her world yeah it's it's, it's, like, it's a little weird it's the air like oh you just missed her she just cruised on through here with her buddy and you're just like what i mean she that's always i mean diablo 2 had that too yeah where you, were, you were you know the the narrator is the guy who followed the character your character from the first game yeah who was corrupted by the gem yeah. around and you're kind of chasing your old character who you never quite see because uh it's always kind of kind of been like you're trying to figure this chase these people around sort of thing it's less in this one because you can go anywhere and do anything it's such a giant map that you're like it's a big coincidence that she was right here because she could have been fucking anywhere yeah. um <laughs> Especially if you divide your time between the different act stories, because act yeah. one through three can be done in any order yeah, kind of yeah. at the same time, as long as you're high enough level for it. And there's a point where, like, if you're jumping back and forth just because of where you end up on the map, like, you're like, okay, y'all are in very different places at the same time. Yeah, point. yeah. But, like, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't, know? no. Uh, but the game is laid out really smartly. Um, mm -hmm. Like, you can follow the main path like very easily side quests i love how they handle those like you initiate them by talking to somebody and then they put a, a waypoint on the map yep. and then you can just stumble across it and and complete side quests even if it's not your active one you'll yeah. see a little, little outline on the map and then like if it's something you gotta find it'll like shrink as you get closer to it yeah very well designed very friendly very and like you, know, you can tell this game was in development for a oh, long, yeah. there's, long and there's always time. I mean, it's been 11 years yeah there's always something to to do there's always you know there's a world event happening or like you know weird things i haven't stumbled up. across many of those in the retail version of the I game tons of them i'm I like you mean where like um like sure events where there's like a, a circle yeah, and the there's a board mode i'm talking about like where a massive boss like appears oh, no, those are like, those i don't think those unlock until you get further in i like, i fought one in the beta yeah but i think a lot of stuff's different in the beta yeah um but i haven't seen any yet in this retail version i don't know if they have those in the first world one like the tier one thing interesting or at least oh, i'm on tier two i'm playing on tier two until you get to a certain level maybe that's a big decision you got to make by the way when you start playing you got to choose whether you want to play tier one or tier two um i chose tier two i'm having no problems and i'm not um, like god's gift to diablo or anything like so i would recommend people play it on tier two because you get more XP, you get better drops. There's a lot of incentive to play it on the harder difficulty setting. I mean, I would certainly say if you have experience in the, in this genre. The boss right. fights were harder tier two because I played the beta on tier one. And then I played the retail on tier two. Mm -hmm. And the boss fights are definitely harder on yeah. tier two. I mean, you can switch if, if you, you can. Like, yeah. I thought about it. Let me tell you, man, because 
the other thing I would say, Matt, the boss fights in this are tuned to perfection to your character. Mm -hmm. Like it is literally like right on the edge of like you get down to like there's two pixels left and you die. Like I, that happened to me like five times in a row with one boss. And then finally I got that last hit in and, I, and it's like, I don't know how they did it. But they tune the difficulty of the bosses in this perfectly to what mm -hmm. your character is, what level it is, what powers it has. Um, but it's challenging. Like the boss fights in this, like you'll walk through the whole dungeon and then get to the boss, and the boss mm -hmm. will just whoop that ass. Yeah, well, I've, that happened. Like that's the main thing that breaks it up is like when you're handling just the general mob stuff. Like you're just kind of wandering through. It's a very easy thing to kind of like you know just sort of get into a rhythm and like you know blowing up corpses. Okay, da, da, I get him. Okay, da, da. it's very it's just chaotic. It's very satisfying. Yeah. And you get to like some kind of boss or mini boss. You're like, oh, the real shit's here. Okay, yeah. I, I better pay attention now. I'm gonna turn the podcast down. Yeah, yeah. That's when you start thinking about like the sequences because generally you can just walk through this game being haphazard. Mm -hmm. Like when you start fighting the tougher enemies, that's when you have to start learning like what the smart sequence is for firing off your attacks and how the, how the cooldowns work. And you know, I go through the sequence and when I finish sequence, the one with the lowest cooldown is ready to go again. And you go through the sequence again, like, in the boss fights, you got to do that. In the rank and file fights, though, not really. Like you can no, be, you can, you can freeform however you want yeah. most of the time with that. Yeah, I mean, a I'm lot sure of that's the... different once you get up to like tier four. Sure. Yeah, right? but the bulk of the fights there are more like a means to an end in this. Like I rarely ever died just fighting like out in the open world. Or I've never died. Oh really? No. I have. Like I've got caught off guard sometimes. I mean, like... your your character is more in the thick of things. Like I yeah. stand back and just. I mean, I'm, right. I am. You're a just directing commander. things. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. not. I'm never. All my attacks are distance. I have no involvement in the melee. See, mine's by design because the first thing I do is I throw out that mud pool mm -hmm. that poisons them and slows them down. So I step up into the mud pool because they all get stuck there. It's like a, like a fly paper. Yeah, so what I do so is... So I just I, stand there. I just hack them with my skies. I throw down the decrepify thing and that s slows them. Uh -huh. And then it slows them and drops their damage. So as my minions come in and start hitting them, they're not doing as much damage to my minions. And it makes them vulnerable to my blood spike. So mm. I'm just throwing that in, and then just as they start to die, I start blowing the corpses up, and the exploding corpses cause more corpses. Yeah. So then I blow that corpse up, and it just becomes... Exploding corpse is very powerful. And it's, I mean, it always has been kind yeah. of the bread and butter of the necromancer, but like... Yeah. And then, of course, I like my like I'm using the same skeleton, like the warriors with the size, because they can... You know, the, the, the more powerful the, the, ones. Well, they're yeah. more powerful, and also I have them set to the thing where they will cut corpses off stronger enemies right. and bosses so I can then use those corpses to, to explode. explode. Like, it, yeah. like the synergy on everything is very satisfying. This is Diablo, people. If you have yeah. not played Diablo, this is what it is. But it's this figuring is also, out how the stuff works together right. to change Right, but this things. is also better than it's ever been. Oh, yeah, yeah, like for this sure. Is, this is the, the best Diablo game they've done. Yeah, I mean, a lot of non-PC players have not played a lot of Diablo. People who have been console players for a long time. Yeah, you've been able to play 3 and 2. Right. But like, they came and later. You don't, play, and like, you don't need to play one. One is yeah. One didn't age. It's a different well. beast. Yeah. Um, but a lot of console players have just kind of rejected these games. They haven't. They've sold well, but they aren't selling twenty million like they do on PC or whatever. Mm. So a lot of people are like, "What's the big deal about Diablo?" And that's really what it is. It's figuring out your skill tree, figuring out which abilities complement each other and chain with each other to make the next one all the more powerful, all the more devastating. And when you hit that. There's very few feelings in gaming that are the same. Like yeah. when you find that chain that just annihilates. And it, and to be fair, it does wane eventually, that feeling. Like, and that was what I was getting at. Like, it's very samey, this game. Like, you're right. You can fire it up and you can just start hacking away and playing through another dungeon and fight the boss at the end. But it's, it all is very samey. I, I don't, even playing like the Necromancer versus the Rogue, um, there's still a grind that is established eventually yeah, where I mean, it's almost it's, just like muscle memory that you're just yeah i mean it's a dungeon crawler it's yeah like they all, they all, they're all that to mm -hmm. some degree it just depends what what speaks to you better and there is a difference between you know i'd say the necromancer is definitely better if you want to sit back and sort of like command the action maybe if you're more new to things like it handles more you know you got a whole army backing you up whereas like you know i played the sorcerer in the beta and she was uh she was a lot of fun too but she was a different kind of fun and it was i felt it felt more like juggling mm -hmm. because you know I could affect everybody, and I was like her thing was she caused damage over time on a bunch of stuff, and so I hit this guy with his one like my ability, and I, you can see the life bar is like marked, so like his like, he's gonna die, he's gonna die from that hit, but it's gonna take him like five seconds. Yeah. So you're sort of hitting all these people, with it, and you're you're kind of 
using other abilities to stay alive long enough for them to die because you don't want to waste the cooldown of that ability to hit them twice. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> so it's a it's more like juggling, and this was more like commanding. And then the other uh, the other classes, I'm sure, are you know different different twists on. So basically, you got to find the class that gives you the fighting style that's going to keep you interested long enough to yeah. get through this kind of a game. That's why you're watching Game Face right now, yeah. so we can tell you this stuff. So before you dive in, you have a plan. And I would argue that Diablo does it, especially Diablo 4, does that better. I mean, look, I don't care about the Barbarian class. I'm never going to play a Barbarian. Me but, either. But there are people that love that. It, you yeah. know, make, it, you know, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. Uh, the only other game of this genre that I've played that I think does such a good job of giving you almost anything you could want to play as is Titan Quest. Mm. I've never Which, even played much Titan Quest. Titan Quest is, I mean, it's not on this level, but mm -hmm. it is re very, very good. Uh, very, very long now that they've added all those expansions. Um, but that one, you've got eight classes, and then you pick a second class at a certain point, and it, every different combination of all those eight classes is a different class. Oh. So it's like 64. Permutations like, and combinations. Whatever, whatever. It's a lot of different ones. And um whatever you think is interesting just put them together and you're going to end up yeah there are stronger and weaker classes but they're all viable mm -hmm. um i think that's true of diablo as well oh for sure for sure like i don't want to play a barbarian but i'm sure the barbarian oh, i've watched people play it and they, extremely they effective. crush it yeah it's like, like i think the barbarians might be the best class just from a raw damage output oh yeah it, for it, sure it should be but like I've, you know in terms of that like solo play like you could make an argument for the necromancer you could make an argument for the barbarian because the barbarian's never gonna barbarian can use four weapons yeah. at the same time like it's, it's like, crazy you know it, it's whatever you want to do yeah um you know and I haven't, I haven't even touched the druid me either um how do you like, feel about the gear Gear's good. Like it's, 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 it's also a little overwhelming, I think. I, it's like there's so many drops. I'm constantly like having to like, on, drop something to pick something up. I mean, like, I just ignore it at a certain point. I mean, yeah. at a certain point, you got to just be like, I mean, early on, you got to start ignoring white items and just pick up the anything blue or above. At this point, I don't But sometimes up, those items are actually more powerful than what you have equipped, even though they're not like legendary or whatever. The, the effects on, like, are just the armor rating? Ignore it. Yeah. Ignore, pay attention to what they do. The special like, effects that they have. This, thing, this one, like, you know, okay, I found a, found two yellows. One of the yellows gives me like 25 more armor, but this one gives me 11 on all stats. Right. And you, know, yeah. like, you gotta pay more attention to that, because like, honestly, armor is not that important. It really isn't it's, that it's, important. It's, yeah. It's, it's it's the bonus abilities they give you. Yeah. And that's a whole, that's like that's a whole math even, equation that yeah. you have to like figure out like how you're multiplying certain abilities and. Yeah, I won't even pick up some, something below yellow now. Yeah, me either. There's no point, but. Um, more, I have more money than God. Like, it's just, but there's still, yeah, I, I've, that's the other thing, Matt. I have so much money. And I don't feel like there's anything worth spending it on. You go to the shops. There will if you get to the end game. Everything in the shops, there's they're lower powered than what I'm just picking up That's out of the not, field. You're not supposed to buy anything in the shop. But money, money is for end game upgrading. Yeah, I have just this huge bank of cash, and I don't do anything. I use it to like repair my weapons, and that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Repair my gear when I come to a blacksmith. That's it. Like that's all I spend I've my money. I've never repaired any gear. Really? Because I never died. It, yeah. Oh well. I guess you're right. If you never died, I bet you there's a it. challenge for that. I, bet, I probably have to intentionally die at some point and Maybe. repair gear. I bet there's a challenge for repairing your gear, huh? <laughs> or an achievement, or something. Because there's a challenge for everything in this game. Someone was asking what version you're playing on in PC. chat. PC. Yeah, you're playing PC. I'm playing PlayStation Five, and they guessed it right. They're like, "Let me guess. Matt's playing PC and Chase yeah. playing PS Five." But I accurate. am playing it with a controller. Suck it. Yeah. Are you playing with a controller? I think Diablo Three and Four play better with a controller. Why would you not? Like. It's so good. It plays fine with a controller. And yeah. you could, I, mean, I switched to the PlayStation 4 on Diablo 3 for a while because it had controller support. They never put controller support in the, in the PC version. Really? There's something about the engine wouldn't do it. Oh, interesting. So now 4 does it, and it's I I think it's better. Huh. Like, and I don't think that about like Titan Quest or a bunch of other games in the genre, but they made this thing work with controller co better. I mean, I'd rather do that than have to click all the fucking corpse explode. That's one because thing. Because that's the other thing I will say. This game is so smart about where I want to do things. Mm -hmm. Like, it's always right where I want to put that decrepify circle, which corpse I want to explode. Like, it's so smart. It is, yeah. Like, I'm it's almost scary. I'm thoroughly impressed. I'm, like, I'm like, I would like to blow that one up. Boom, it, there it, it is. It blows like, up. it's yeah. so smart. Again, it's just over and over, you, you can tell how much time has been spent developing yeah. this game. Like, it just feels like there's years of polish on this game. Yeah, the polish And there kind of has is, to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there is. Um... This is just, I mean, it's so the opposite experience of, of Immortal. Could you imagine being Rod Ferguson hmm. and being called in to finish and wrap up this game? It must have just been overwhelming. How do you, where do you even start? There's so many 
options and features and mm-hmm. systems on systems like coming in and you weren't working on it for like the first seven years with everybody Honestly, else. Honestly, I think you just throw a dart at the design doc and work <laughs> out from pick, there. Just it's start like, from that spot. Like, I mean, I don't, it, I would, it's, I mean, it's Rod for, or it's Rod. He, I'm sure he knows. He's the finisher, but yeah, he knows where, where, what thing, he knows what shape things need to be in before you can start working inward. But it would be interesting to learn eventually where this game was when he came in and what he abs- he actually did to, get this into shipping Yeah, that shape. would be a very interesting drunken kitchen conversation. Because I don't think he would ever share that. No, exactly. That was, that you'd have to be at That's a, at Packer's party yeah, when he's had a half a bottle of scotch yeah. conversation. Yeah, like he wouldn't talk about it with the press like on the record or no, whatever. No, no, no. That would be a that would be a But I would love to would. know because it is for, it's again, like we haven't even talked about the end game. Mm-hmm. This is, that's this whole other thing that's like a whole game unto itself. Like mm-hmm. if you're a person who like only buys games that you can get the absolute most value out of i really struggle to think of another it's game more worth buying than diablo yeah, 4 ma- this year. map is so big i mean i've There's played so this game stuff. for like 40 hours in the it's like one tenth of the map is opened yeah. and they got two expansions coming yeah and i do think like it almost some of it is probably have at least much. one class each yeah right? it's just because the other thing too is that like these zones are so big that like you see right, the, the same these, like these environments like, over and over. These games are expected to be played for years. I know like, people play people. This is there are people who this is what they play. I know. They it's play all Diablo. they play. I know. They don't play other video games. They play Diablo. I mean, there's people that already hit level 100. Yeah, that's bonkers. One of the, one of the guys in my clan is 100. That's insane, Matt. I mean, he's been playing for like five days. I mean, but. that person has not done anything but play no, Diablo. No, he has not. I mean, I've been playing a living crap out of it. And I'm like level thirty or something. Like yeah, I'm, I don't think I'm forty yet. But like I'm high that 30s. blows my mind. I have the top level golem, so yeah, I haven't got thir- there yet. So you're ahead of me. Yeah, the thirty two or thirty five. I can't remember. Yeah, I think I'm like right at like level thirty or something like that. So and I've been playing it as much as I can. That like, was the o- the only interface issue I had was I couldn't figure out how to summon the golem. Oh really? Because it turned out it's a separate skill. It's not the same. Oh, it's not the same as the summon skeleton. So I had to like switch to that, summon it, and then take it off my hot bar. Well, that's the other thing too. Is that these summons are a skill that you can level up five different levels, and then you can get the advanced one. Like it's mm-hmm. the skill trees in this are just and then they've, all, they've all got different. Um, there's two different like kind of permutations of each summon you can yep. pick from, and then there's a third option where you can't summon them anymore, but it gives you a bonus a to your boost. character, yeah. a big boost. So, I have not chosen. So that. you can play a necromancer <laughs> that has no summons but just has a bunch of buffs from yeah. not from choosing not to. Yeah, have yeah, summons. which I I would never do, but that's why I play the necromancer. Right. To summon. But it's like, but they put it in there. Yeah. You know, it's there for people who it. may want to try something. If else, you want to I mean, play a necromancer that does not rely on bones, or yeah. does, because because there are like the I think the bone abilities the bone based abilities and maybe the blood stuff i bet you you could make a pretty solid tank out of like a minimum tank out of that yeah like it's it's uh it wouldn't be a barbarian but like you could it's viable yeah like it's an absolutely. idea um age of the legend walks and asks is there a sifted clan there absolutely is any of you guys playing diablo you can join the sifted clan just search for it it is open there's no passcode or password that you need to get into it it is set up. You will see my character is already attached to the clan. Just search for Sifted, S-I-F-T-D, and join on up. And that's the other thing, Matt. I have not played with anybody else. So that was supposed to be the big feature here is that open world, MMO-ish with other characters around. I've ran into like three other characters the whole time playing this. Like I was in like a little impromptu horde mode thing and some dude jumped in and helped me with that and then ran off and I never saw him again. I saw like two other human characters in the world. I realize some people may be really excited to hear that because some people don't want other characters yeah, in their man, Diablo I game. Really I've seen more than that, but I, I think that's going to change today because yeah. the game's out. Right. Now like, today, it's, early access. everybody gets it. Yeah. To remember, to be there, you either had to have a code or you had to pay $100. Or PR. I think PR sent me a code. That's why I said, a code. Oh, I thought you meant like through like your pre-order or whatever. No, you, no, there was no pre-order code. That you just get access on Battle.net or whatever. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, it just goes live when it goes live, depending on which version. But if you got, you know, unless either you got a code like us or you uh, paid an extra 30 bucks for like four or five days of early access, which is a little... Yeah, to some people it's probably worth it though. I guess. Yeah. But, uh, all I wanted was the wolf cub backpack, and I got that. So yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize that I needed to go an extra mile in the beta to get yeah, that. Yeah, gotta get stuff. to level twenty. To yeah, get that. I thought I had got to level twenty, but I guess not. I will say I got to level twenty much faster in the retail. I, I felt. Did you? I felt like it happened. But I, I was grinding a little bit on the in the beta. beta, but maybe it's just because there was more to. I never ran out of 
place to go because I did end up in the far north at one point without meaning to, and I'm like, oh, I guess I'll go to the main quest, and I realized I was doing the Act Three. Uh, and like I was, I was like, I don't remember this part from the beta because I finished <laughs> the amount of stuff that was in the beta in terms of story, and I don't. I'm like, oh, oh these are different characters. This is Act Three. Um, but that's how seamless that all works. Like, the fast travel is great. Like yeah. once you, there, every little town has a pad that you activate, and you can then fast travel to that town. Like mm -hmm. everything is just works the way it should. Like I really struggle to find a lot of criticisms of this game, Matt. No, I don't have. I I don't know. And again, I'm not like Lord Diablo or anything, but I really struggle to find much to criticize in this no, game. I, I think uh, I don't have anything bad to say about this, other than like you know. I mean, it's, it's everyone's individual choice whether they want to support Blizzard or not. Yeah. All the weird shit Blizzard does. Yeah. Um, and, you know, either you're gonna, you are know, you like this genre or you don't. Yeah, but this... I mean, but this otherwise... Is, this is my... This is definitely my favorite Blizzard franchise, and this is the best Diablo game they've ever made. I would have... I, I can't disagree with that. So, like, there you go. Yeah. It's really, really good, and there's so much content, it just... It's just gigantic. Yeah, if you, you could just play the one. The, actually, that's the one downside I was thinking playing. It was like I wish I didn't have to play all these other games coming out this summer because I could just play this till like September. You could keep going forever and ever. Yeah. Like, it's, and then you hit the end game, and it becomes this whole other entire entirely it was different. Di beat. It was difficult to pull myself away and play Street Fighter. At one yeah. Point. And then I got sucked into Street Fighter, and I'm like, oh, I should go play Diablo. Yeah. Some more. <laughs> and they're such it was, it, polar opposites. Yeah. They're other very than the fact things. that they're both loaded with content. Yeah. Like they are both like. They're both games that have have learned very much the correct lessons from their slightly disappointing predecessors. Yeah, and they're both games that I would recommend for people to yeah. buy without and yeah, just a second thought. Back. I and mean, the value you're going to get out of both of these games that we've talked about today is like it's going to. I I would say it'll be tough for another game to top either one of these for the rest of the year. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of there's a lot of games in the game of the year conversation. There are, man. But this is up there. It's gonna be tough. This is a great year for video games, guys. I mean, I don't know how many more times I gotta say it, and we're only halfway through. We're yeah, only we halfway through the year. Barely know what's happening. I mean, we have got Starfield. Maybe Starfield will be good enough yeah. to be in that. I mean, that's the thing is like, even if Starfield is like the best launch like Bethesda's ever had, does it match some of the best stuff that's come out this I year? I don't know. Like. I mean, I still really just love the, Harry Potter, like Hogwarts the, Legacy. Just the smoothness of the experience of this and and Street Fighter and presumably Spider Man Two. Yeah, we know how Insomniac rolls. Yeah, um, it's yeah, awesome. And then we man. got yeah, what a great year. So even lucky Forza, to... even Forza Eight. Oh yeah, like yeah. That, those games are always incredibly smooth. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, we're lucky to be alive right now, people. That's all I got to say. And the crazy part is, you know, we're at this this stage where. There just aren't as many games coming out as there used to be. Like, it's like one fifth of the number of games per year are released now. Mm -hmm. But it's just the quality level, just, it's all the timing, all the delays from last year. It's just all culminated. Yeah, I, don't, I don't miss the Golden Axe Beast Riders. No, <laughs> that's true. Honest. I mean, yeah. truth be told, fifty percent of those games were trash or more. Yeah, I mean, our standards were different then because games just weren't as great as they are now. Let's be honest; they weren't given as much time to develop them mm -hmm. and blah blah blah. So. Um, Everything has just worked out for 2023 to just be amazing. And it's like, it's tough on the wallet. I know, believe me. Um, there's a lot of great games that you could spend money on right now. And now they're all 70 bucks, so they're up to $10 more and blah, blah, blah. Uh, Cinetike is asking you, Matt, any of the recent PC bugs or problems we've been seeing? Granted, you have a baller PC. And you're right. Mm -hmm. Your PC can brute force a lot of stuff that other people have issues with. I haven't seen anything. Yeah. Um, the first time I loaded it up, it took like a minute to load up my character screen. Uh, like the first time after the first time I played it. It took like a long... To the point that I thought it had frozen. And I don't know what that's about. Uh, it does seem to be tied to the new graphics drivers I downloaded. But after that, it was fine. Okay. Um, which is a big deal because well, here's the question that I have, Matt, is like, how has launch been today? Yeah, I don't know. Because that's been a problem with Blizzard's games. On launch day, you have to wait in queues and sit in. So I don't mm -hmm. know. Maybe you guys have been out there in the wild and know I haven't played it today. But I'll say this. During this early access period that I've been playing, instantaneous. No, no, no. There's queues, been no really, queues yeah. at yeah. all. Just right on into the game. And to your point, on PlayStation 5, loads like a beast. It's crazy, too, the size of the mm. world that it's loading, and it's just in a snap of the fingers. It's actually, just, there it is. Actually, that's also true on Street Fighter. 
Yeah. On PS5. It, it's the loading is like instantaneous. Instant. Yeah. Even on even the online matches. Yeah. Like done. Yeah, it's fast. It's really, you, you, that's one of the reasons it's so smooth and easy to play both of these games because you never have load time to think about your life choices. No, you're right. <laughs> There's like, no time to check your yeah. phone or for text messages. or It's like, oh, here we are. Uh, yeah. Like I've gotten a couple where I, especially playing Diablo uh, a few days ago, where I, uh, at some point I, got, I had a couple messages like, I was like, where are you? Are you okay? I mean, you haven't said anything in like three hours. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> you can get lost in both of these games for sure. Um, Sentai says, Matt, probably the shaders compiling. That's probably what it was. It's it's weird that you do that on the, on the, the, the select your character screen, especially because until that loads, it just says create character and it doesn't show that you have a character. Right, right. And when you're level 30 something, I'm like, where is my character? <laughs> Heart attack. <Yeah. laughs> Panic mode. Uh, Erebus Jones says, as a veteran of the D3 launch, credit where it's due, the D4 launch has been really smooth. So just logged in. AJ the Legend Watson says, no queue on PC. There you go. Awesome. Right in the middle of the launch day. All the consternation, all the hand and ringing. And it's 6.15 on the East Coast. Like, it's getting to be prime People time. People are there. off work. Um, yeah. So if it's not buckling right now, it's not going to jump in and play it, buy it, buy Street Fighter, buy Diablo yeah. 4. So I do remember that Diablo 3 launch. Yeah. That was a mess. It was a mess. A lot of their, mess, a lot of their launches are. Yeah. Diablo Immortal was not great at launch. No. It had, like, long queues. So. And it was great. Diablo Immortal. And it was Diablo Immortal. <laughs> Blizzard's figuring it out finally, at least. It said like last week that it was very, very confident that there would be no issues, and yeah, yeah it was right like this it. time. Yeah. So that's another two thumbs up from Game Face for Diablo Four. You probably could have guessed this already because we talked about the beta for a long time, like, mm -hmm. um, and we were both really positive on the beta. So you probably guessed that we were gonna like it. But now having played the retail, everything's good. Everything's clean. No crashes. I haven't had any crashes. I did have Street Fighter crash once. I never cra I think I did have a crash with the after the graphics driver update, but it crashed like two seconds after I loaded into the game, and I just had to start me it too. up again. That's where it happened for me. And no crashes in Diablo. Um, these games are clean. They did a great job. That was Diablo that crashed for me. Oh, Diablo. Yeah. I had okay. But that was again. I think that was a shader thing because I'd skip through all the logos, and I think I. Just broke it. <laughs> that's funny how just skipping through the opening like logos and credits can sometimes screw with the game really bizarre um let's see if you guys have any questions about this before we move on barry lomax says street fighter 6 froze for me once um i don't think so time zini i played for like 10 minutes and uninstalled the beta then got hooked during server slam and ended up getting the game through graphics card upgrade <laughs> Interesting. Why you didn't like the beta, but you like the final game? I don't know why that would be. Because I don't, honestly, the one thing I would say is like, I don't see a lot of difference between the beta and the retail. Like no. that beta was rock solid, man. Like it was really good, which is why we were really hyped by it. We're like, man, it's even done yet. It's not even like final version. This is already playing really well. Um, huh? no, you guys don't have any questions. That's the other thing too. Is like, I do think Diablo. A wellness check from El Guapo. How are you feeling? I'm getting a little squirmish. Um, I will say this, I do feel a little bit better than I did last Tuesday, but I'm not, like, today I'm a month post-op. A month. This was oh, supposed yeah. to be a week and a half to two weeks. And so I called my doctor in a panic yesterday, and she was like, you're panicking. And I'm like, I am panicking. Like, I'm starting to wonder if this is the way I'm going to be for the rest of my life. And she's like, no, no, no. no. So she's at some. I had that same feeling after mine because it was not taking. It was taking much longer than they said it was going to take. And like I mean, like the whole. I mean, think, I think they told me the same thing. They told you like, oh, three months and you'll be back to come hundred percent normal. And I'm like, I am not. And I'm definitely not. I'm like I'm in pain right now, and I brought pain pills again to take during the show. But I. So she's at some convention, and she's like, I'm calling the girls at the office. You are going to get the first appointment when I get back. So I have an appointment on Thursday at like nine in the morning to go in and. Have it checked out. So, I don't know, man. <laughs> Barry Lomax says you won't. I had knee surgery. I've had two knee surgeries. I've had my ACL reconstructed, and I had my meniscus surgery last year. Remember that? And you're right. My knee feels worse than it did before I had the surgery. That is a huge mistake. So, anyway, I'm just trying to stay patient. Um, it sucks. Like, right now, I've been sitting in this position for a really long time, and it's become painful. So, we still got some stuff to get through here on the show. I'm going to try to fight on through it. Um, but, anyway... Uh, that's Diablo 4. Two thumbs up. Go buy it. It is interesting, though. It is an acquired taste. Like, you can tell 
by the response in our chat, the muted response in our chat that like well, some people just don't care for this genre of games. Like mm. they're just not interested. In so for those of you who who fought through this conversation, we appreciate it. Yeah, I mean you can make the best Madden game ever, and I'm still not gonna yeah <laughs> play it. That's true. But... <laughs> That's true. Uh, okay, let's move on. We're gonna talk next to a gigantic announcement yesterday. Although if you look at Apple's stock price, you may not think that it was a, a great announcement because the stock price fell like a full percent or something after. It um, also fell after they announced the iPhone. So. It did. Well, that's the funny thing about Apple. If you follow its stocks, is like anytime it does anything, its stock price drops. Yeah. If it can, it it's can. A, it's a combination of like, oh my god, that's never going to work, and all the true believers being like, that wasn't as revolutionary as I wanted it to be. That's so part of you it. Can't please everybody at all. The other part of it too is that so much stuff leaks out that new stuff they claim is already baked into the stock price. So people had already bought Apple stock in anticipation of this new device before the device was even actually announced. And so even if they, it's the crazy part, Matt, is Apple will announce, say the experts think that Apple is gonna fall short of revenue expectations. Apple will report that it destroyed expectations and make all the press look like morons, all the analysts, no offense factor, look like morons and his stock will go down it's crazy the stock market is insane by the way yep. there's like no rhyme or reason to how this stuff works but anyway its stock did go down after it announced its brand new product apple vision pro and again we've known about this for a long time that apple was working on either an ar hmd or a vr hmd or one that had both and as it turns out Apple Vision Pro is both. It is both VR and AR. Um, Matt, what were your first impressions of this whenever you saw it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay. $3,500. I'll worry about it in seven years yeah. when anybody actually cares. When it's actually designed as a mainstream yeah. device. I mean, I'm, I've been using Apple stuff since 1986. I've been, you know, forever uh never buy apple hardware until the third iteration at the earliest well mostly because that's when the price comes down price comes down where the average joke can kind of afford it well and also they figured out what it is is more reliable you're not going to run into like manufacturing issues uh like you know whether it's going to be a success or not uh and even that's not i mean i've never felt the need to buy an apple watch um i just don't i didn't either and then that. i got one my wife bought me one and now i love it yeah it's just not i don't I don't care. Um, I, I I don't. I never liked watches much to begin. I had with. never worn a watch. I just don't need it. Um, it's not. I don't need it. Like if someone gave it to me, like you said, I, I'd use it. But like I don't. It's not a thing I need to do. Like I like going on a bike ride and not having to take my phone with me. I can just mm -hmm. wear my watch is a cellular version, so it it will send me the alerts. Like if something's going on at home, like text me. I get all the pertinent info that I need on the watch without having to carry the phone around. So. It, it's just all about lifestyle. What, mm -hmm. Does it fit your lifestyle or does it not? Like, if you spend a lot of time at home, why would you ever need a watch? Why would you ever need anything like that? So uh, I guess it all depends on your life. But so this is priced at $3,500, which is insane. It's coming out in early. Yeah, this, I mean, this is a HoloLens kind yeah. of thing. It's, it's a developer tool right now. That, yeah, or, or developer toy, depending on how you want to. They're saying Frame they're it. only going to produce 150,000 of them, mm -hmm. like first run. <laughs> that should be enough. And I think, yeah. But I do think it'll sell out. Probably. I mean, there's like enough, HoloLens sold like 20,000 units. Like this will sell 150. There's enough I think. rich idiots in the cult to, to yeah. do that. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of rich people that are Apple fans. I'm, I'm an Apple person who I, my, I have family members that work at Apple. I can say that. Yeah. We're, we're, it's, it's, <laughs> Fair it's, game. A, it's a weird fan base. Yeah. Let's, let's be honest. Well, the one thing I would say is like if you watched this initial presentation and didn't follow up later, you might think that like it is, well, it is overpriced, first of all. Don't get me wrong. This is crazy overpriced. I mean, that's probably what it costs roughly but, to make that. But it's like, why would you pay? Who? So what? You know? Apple has gone like some. I people can make say, a PlayStation Five out of diamonds that would cost <laughs> yeah, that much right, too. Right. But it's like, why would you want exactly? That? Yeah. Like somebody would say Apple went above and beyond with this. Some people would say they went overboard with this. Yeah. And that's. The, I mean, the truth is, this is the best VR AR device on the planet by several multitudes. Sure, I mean, it fits the old insanely great thing. Yeah, but it's also it leans kind of hard on the insane. Yeah. Um. I mean, look, they. I'm sure they know the reality of the market. Yeah, yeah. The other They're thing, not stupid. The other thing, of course, is like, 
you know, you're, they're, they're trying to make this into the next iPhone. They want this to be a thing that everybody wears and everybody uses. Um, obviously, that day, it will not look like that. Yeah. It will be more of a fashion-forward object that is more compact and more... Um, but it, it's a starting point, you know? It's like the, the, the original, so here's the, the original here's the, iPod didn't really do what you expect an iPod to do now either. So I'm just going to pause it here because this is one of the few points where they actually show it working with gaming. They don't show any VR games in this whole presentation, by the way. I don't think they have. I mean, I think it's a display device. I mean, they had Kojima than, there, who yeah. Death Stranding's coming and all his future games are coming to the device or whatever. But here's the thing about this. To your point about talking about they want it to become an iPhone, I do think the idea is that this device eventually replaces the iPhone. That would be their ideal scenario. Yes. yes. And I also feel like as time goes on, they're going to start marketing this as it replaces more than your iPhone. It yeah. also replaces your 70 inch OLED right. TV. Well, and also keep in mind, like there is a just to get a little dystopian for a moment now. This is tying in with the idea that no one's going to be able to afford a decent place to live. No, you're right. This is the idea. This this stuff this is the corporate angle on, oh, you can only afford like a studio a shoe apartment. shoebox? That's Who okay. cares? Because you can visit anywhere in your VR. And head, you have your, no idea. You're Apple sitting head. in this dinky little closet. Right. And that's why you're going to pay $1,500 for it. Because you, well, you don't have to buy a TV. Because you don't have to stare at your fucking wall anymore. I do wonder. And if- everybody's tied in. It's going to be a huge social FOMO thing. Because early on, it doesn't matter. Because look, you know, it's so community and inter- interaction driven that it's like it, the first iteration of this thing. You're only going to be able to communicate with people that can that are willing to and can afford to pay thirty five hundred dollars for this device. Right. And I guarantee you, most of those people are not people you want to talk. to. No. <laughs> so like, <laughs> and they don't want to talk to you no, either. <laughs> so don't worry about that. But that is the idea. And like, you'll see some of this. Like there is there is a there is a there is a dist- look how small that room is. Uh huh. Yeah. Look how like like. You're basically like, oh, you can't afford. Like, Matt, is, all the new apartments this is being built escape. in LA already are shoeboxes. Yeah. And this is this is what they're. This is the Ready Player One thing. Uh-huh. You know, they all live in box cars. Shannies, like, basically. Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't matter because they because they're in this, this other, other world, world. And they're. It, you're absolutely right. That's this what is, they're after. It here. is. And so it seems absurd right now. Thirty five hundred dollars, but two iterations from now, it costs seventeen fifty. And you don't need mm-hmm. to buy that eighteen hundred dollar TV, and you don't need to buy that thousand dollar phone anymore. And suddenly, what people think Apple is crazy yeah. about right and now, now you, it all falls and into place. You and this, you're like, hot damn! And they're gonna they were to right again. The idea that it was this giant TV, and they can like they, one of the most important things in this use case demo thing is when she di- when she changes the environment to look like a mountainside. Yep. So there's While a she's dial. TV. So there's a uh, dial on the side. That you spin. You literally turn down reality. It's a reality dial. Yeah. Yep. You can bring it back in and you can, it's like a sliding scale. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I am not saying that's cool. Yeah. It is cool in a tech sense, mm-hmm. but there is a, there is a there it is. creepiness to look, this. Look, she just lays down in the bed and now she's now staring at the, sky. at the sky. I mean, it's really freaking Who crazy. cares that you're in a tiny <laughs> apartment that like, no, it's, it's. You turn on a fan so you can feel there's a breeze blowing and. There, there is a, there is just such a massive opiate of the masses thing happening here. Like that, like the, the goal here is like there, there, that, that, that's it. That is, that is the key. Like you are no longer where you are. Yeah. That is their, what they're selling yeah. and it's what they're trying to get. And because that will be the escape from the reality that you are forced into. And that is extremely disturbing. Yeah. AJ, the legend Watson says, I don't see it. As my wife said, I enjoy watching television with you. Not feeling separated because we both have equipment on our faces. I can understand that perspective, but I'm telling you, over time, that is going to change. It just yeah. is. I mean, I agree with that, but at the same time, A, people younger than us probably don't. Yeah, they don't care. And B, that's why they have the display that shows your eyes. The other, and, and here's the other through thing. through them. Because like, yeah. the idea is like you are not... Like, there's a bunch of things in this video which are like, use case, use case, Oh, interact with your child so they don't feel abandoned by you and your headset. Like that is well, they're basically saying film your child, your child's big milestones right. with this because the thing is, when you record it on this, you can go back and later and watch it as if you're there. You're there. Like it's the Batman like AR detective. It's thing. trippy yeah. AF, dude. And then if you're in that, like I don't think this works yet, but they've talked about like there's people that are working on the tech that have talked about like event like say you're at a birthday party for your kid and a bunch of people have these headsets. You can combine uh-huh. all the recordings and get a full recreation like a of the master room record- you were in. It's insane. And I'm like, okay, this is literally surveillance on a level that 
you have never it thought is. of before. The other thing too is like you thought Alexa was intrusive. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're thinking right now is like that you're able, you're seeing through the headset and seeing their eyes. That is not what's happening. It's a video of their eyes. It is video, an yeah. OLED screen facing outward, mm-hmm. and there's a camera that's recording their face, and it's just showing their face. It's insane. The other thing I saw people complaining about: oh, it's tethered. Oh, it's wired. It's actually it's not. not. That cable goes to a battery, and this is another yeah, genius thing. A magnetic thing. cable that goes to a battery yeah, pack. Yeah, to a battery pack. This is another genius thing. So if you think about things like the Quest, where you're paying more money for the model that has the more battery life or the more storage, now instead of ha- Apple having to adjust the actual headset, you just buy a mm. better battery pack. Oh, and this is this is fascinating. Did you see that this is the, the lens thing? No. Where you can buy your prescription. Oh, yeah. You and have slide to, though. them in because they don't fit get glasses. You can't fit glasses. And that's a huge drawback, in and my that's opinion. That's why I got contacts because glasses didn't yeah. fit in our things. That is well. a big, to me, that's a big problem with it. Um, and that's going to be a lot of money. Yep. Those, 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 those lenses are going to be a lot of money. Yeah. The battery packs are going to be a lot of money. I mean, oh, yeah. Apple, Apple gouge makes you this for huge it. gouging killing on all the. I mean, look how much a fucking lightning cable costs. Like, what, 40 bucks or something yep. now? It's true. It's a cable. Yeah, I know. It's a cable. And it's going to get all weird and crinkled at the end after you have it for like a month and a yep. half. Uh, yep. Some other things about this. It really is like, I know you look at it and you're like, this is just another Oculus Quest, or it's really not. Um, yeah, this is a this is a big. I mean, it's not going to be relevant to like think any of us because yeah. the cost and it's the, just too expensive. The, but yeah. it's a it, it's their big move. Yeah, it's and there's a I don't possi- think people there's understand. There's a possibility yet. seven years from now we're all going to be sitting here wearing Apple Video Pro sixes and like making fun of our hot takes. No, there's today. a possibility in seven years from now I am in God knows where and you're God knows where and we're doing game face we're wearing doing something it. like yeah. this. Like it's. And everybody in the chat is just sitting there virtually in an right. audience. Yeah, and they're not watching Twitch anymore. They We're in the room with them. Yeah, they're watching us on a stage. <laughs> yes. So there's and other but things how, about But this. how will Luna be involved? Right. We can't get a little, you need a little cat headset? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's a good yeah. point. Uh, there's other things about this, too, that make it different. It's not paired to anything. There's no pairing this. It has its own operating system running on it. It's completely self-contained. You can look at your Mac wearing this thing and the screen of your Mac will appear mm. in the headset. Just looking at your Mac. Yep. There you can see. There's that the is eyes. that yeah. right there. That is not see-through. Not, see, yeah, that's a video screen. That is a video screen showing her eyes. My other question is is the comfort of this thing. Because the, the fact that there's no over the top of the head strap, which helps support the weight. Reports said reports are saying that it's heavier than other HMDs because they build it solid state. It's not made yeah, out of plastic. It's, it's very dense. But the like. point is, is like other HMDs aren't making their HMDs out of plastic to be cheap. They're doing it to save the weight, right. so it's not uncomfortable to wear. The this battery really, life this really feels like a, it was a complete blue sky design. Yeah, like whatever you want to, like your your imaginary super headset, just do it. Yeah. The also the battery life by default only lasts two hours. That's bad. Mm-hmm. But you can plug your battery pack into USB-C and just use it forever. That's good. Yeah. Um, so it's not paired to The battery to pack is cursed. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. It's its own computer. But as I said, you can pair it with your Macs. It, the, the, what is really flipping people out with this is the eye tracking in this is like literally they're like people say, oh, it's witchcraft. People feel like it is witchcraft. Mm-hmm. Like, so the way you operate this, there's no controllers. There's no controllers. And there never will be. And how it works is there are like 16 cameras on the outside I of... I ain't talking to someone with that on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. Like, there are like 16 cameras on the outside of the device. And how you select things is you just pinch your fingers together. And no matter where you have your hand... It knows. It sees it. Mm-hmm. And they said it is creepy <laughs> AF. They said you don't realize how often you touch your fingers together until you start using this thing because it picks it up and it'll start like selecting stuff. No, and you have to almost... It'll never work for Italian mothers. <laughs> Abotanza. Or Chef Boy RD. <laughs> <laughs> look, look what we've lost. Uh, but anyway, they're saying the, the eye tracking in this is crazy. Like, you can look at something inside it, it like the most minute pixel, and it will select that freaking pixel. Mm. They said it's just crazy how accurate it is. I will say that, like, there's, there's, a, there's a use case here where, like, I could scan everything in real life. And it would just tell me the Wikipedia <laughs> article on everything I look yeah. at. And I'm like, you know what? That's pretty cool. Yep. Uh, so it has like 10. I think it's actually like 10 cameras total. I mean, and that's some watchdog shit. It is. It absolutely is. It's you got, got 
you're going to be it's like some people I'm sure could hack out some things that like basically do the watchdogs personal info thing every time you walk down the street. And look Absolutely. At um, there will be an app. I guarantee you there'll yeah. be an app for that. Um, it uses a login system called Optic ID where it maps the irises on your eye. So you don't log in. You just put it on. It looks yeah. at your irises. You're like, yep, it that's Shane. It knows who you are. Um, as Matt mentioned, you have to get Zeiss lenses if you're a glasses wearer, if you need glasses, because you can't wear your glasses inside. Um, we talked about the cable, how it's not really connecting to a Mac or anything. It's just connected to the battery pack. Um, the, we talked about the crown on the side to fade reality in and out, which is trippy to even think about. Um, the other thing, too, is like people are like, how is this going to be successful? It's going to be successful because it's going to be the only HMD that allows you to use Apple stuff. So if you want to use FaceTime, you're going to have to buy what you could only. This is the only HMD that will let you use FaceTime. And the FaceTime in this was built just for it. It creates like a 3D rendered version of yourself. Mm -hmm. They, so when people are talking to you on FaceTime, it's not really you. Yeah. It's like this weird... Well, the, the eyes are. It uses the video of your eyes for that. Yeah. And it kind of extrapolates the face from there. You can see it in the in that clip. There's like, a clip of it, yeah. The, the eyes look a little different than the rest of the face. It's a little trippy. It I is. <laughs> but, I mean, we, you can get used to anything. Yeah, and as I said, it has its own operating system. It's called Vision OS. And, uh, you can use it like a work computer. It's like you have two 4K displays while you're working. So, you know, I think enterprise is going to be what this is used for the most until the prices start coming down. Oh, for sure. But it's like you don't need a computer monitor. You can plug in your keyboard and, and you can sit there and work with this on. Yeah, it, it, basically, this is the, you know, remember the the uh, the old Connect meme where it was like what you think Connect will be like. It's like, it's like good morning, <laughs> Xbox. Good morning, Batman. Yeah. Right, and like in real life, it's like, turn on, turn on, turn on. Like, yeah, you're this yelling is, at it. This is going to actually be good morning, Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else is there? Yeah, I think content is a big X factor. They didn't show a ton of games for our purposes. Obviously, we care about games. They showed you basically how you could use it as a TV to play your PlayStation 5. That's basically mm -hmm. what they were showing there. Although, I think though that like NBA 2K is on is going to be on this and is going to be native to it. It's yeah. like I mean yeah. they are using a PlayStation controller. Though. Yeah, they were. Well, they said that I mean I can use a dual sense. Dual sense is supported on my MacBook it to is. the point that I had to get a data blocking stick so it would stop controlling my fucking desktop when I was trying to play things. Yeah. But content is definitely the X factor. Obviously, Apple with Apple TV and all its services yeah. is doing a pretty good job. It brought Disney on stage for a partnership. That was probably the best partner they could have brought on. Yeah, it's like, oh, Disney Plus works on it. I'm like, for $3,500, it better take me to the fucking park. Yeah. Um, and, and, like, I mean, I don't know. Like, the, right now, the, the, the selling point of this is eventually this is what the, the Mac OS environment will be. Yeah. Like, this will be the Apple environment. It will be. If they have their druthers. That's what, that's what I think people aren't getting yet. Like, yeah. But that's Apple. Like, they can see mm -hmm. into the future about how this is going to work. Everybody else is like, oh, that's dumb. Oh, that's stupid. And then two years later, you're the one who looks stupid. Oh, yeah. That's I mean, how Apple works. I mean, I'm obviously skeptical about this because of the prices, and yeah. I don't know if they, if they but, but at the same time, I still remember back when they debuted the, the iPhone, and all those BlackBerry people were like, I would never use something without an actual keyboard. I was one of them. And it was like, mm-hmm. I once it. wrote a Madden review on my BlackBerry on a, <laughs> on a flight. And the people were telling me, like, you need to get an iPhone. I'm like, nope, I can type 50 words per minute mm -hmm. on my BlackBerry. I remember Blair Herter went out and got an iPhone, like, when it came to launch day. I remember he, he, like, we got into work, and he's like, I got to go. I'm, going, I'm going, to, <laughs> going to get it. And so you go in, guy came back with it, and I'm like, okay, let me try this thing, because I was skeptical about the yeah. keyboard thing. And I, and I, I used it for him. I'm like, oh. yeah, it's going to work. <laughs> That's going to work. It's going to work. Yeah. Like, I didn't get I didn't an get, iPhone. I didn't get one for, like, two more years, three more years. But, like, no, my first I, that, iPhone. First, that first day, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. that's that's going to work. My first okay. iPhone was an iPhone 5. So I was very skeptical. I'm, I'm typically very skeptical. But Apple has proved me wrong over and yep. over again. Well, same, like Zed Saber Jr., remember when everyone mocked the iPad? I do. You yeah. know what the only way I read comics anymore is? Yeah. On my iPad. Yeah. It's, Comixology changed that forever. I mean, the watch, the AirPod, all of it. It's just like, who's going to pay $200 for AirPods? Like, 50 billion Lots people. Lots of people, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, you, I, all I got to say is doubt Apple at your own peril. Like, yeah. that's all I'm going to say. Not because every, I, mean, I have been made the fool many times. Not everything they do is a winner. The, the touch bar on the new MacBooks right. is garbage. Yep, that was um, a huge mistake. But yep. I knew that. The Instantly. Instant. Yeah. I was like, that's a bad idea. That's a terrible idea. Yeah. This and I'm not it's this is overpriced, but it's not a terrible idea. Yeah. In fact, it's a little creepy how well it works. It is kind of creepy. Yep. 
And I think people will get over that creep factor and not it won't take long. Yeah. Yeah. There's gonna there I mean, there's gonna be a point when, you know, we're sitting around on park benches in our sixties and all the everyone under fifty is running around with shit like that on their face. Yeah. Although it'll be smaller and sleeker. Oh yeah, it'll be like glasses, yeah. basically. Yeah. And I do remember Google Google glasses. Oh yeah. Um, a Jeremy Hoffman, who you oh, know, Jeremy Hoffman used to have. That, he had yeah. them, and he would wear them around work. And like eventually, he All stopped the wearing them because well, they basically went away. Yeah, but, they stopped. But I remember, him. you know, I, I tried it a few. I tried his a few times, and there's some cool stuff in there. And he he would describe. He's, he's like he's like you've got the Google Glass smile. Yeah, it's like as soon as you'd see it do one of those, you you'd, you'd, you'd grin. You can't you help. Be aware. You can't help it. it. It's like it's because it's so futury, and it's yeah. so it's it's so what you imagine. The future to be and there it is right on your face yeah um one of the final things that they floated about this as far as content is concerned is setting up partnerships with the major sports leagues that's and again yeah. the one thing you got to remember is this is apple it can do this yeah. stuff like and, the small, and they want to be right involved the with smaller apple. guys can't yeah. do it apple has the capital to do anything and so they're talking mm -hmm. to the leagues now where you can pay 10 or 20 dollars to sit Front row at, a, at an NBA playoff game or, yeah, or a concert. 50 yard or con right. like again, Apple. Imagine <laughs> them going to Ticketmaster and being like, you can sell infinite front row tickets for whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. You want I would hope that Apple would stick up for us in that case, but probably not. Probably not. Not if, yeah. there's, not if there's a cut to be made. But again, instead of letting people run around charging like secondary market thousands of dollars for Taylor Swift tickets, you could just sell all those Taylor Swift tickets. And there's no end to it. There's no end to it. Everyone it's, be there's, the there's a billion D seats. Yeah. Like, it's just never ending. It's, I know it's hard sometimes when you see some of this stuff. Like It's very easy to just want to be negative and be like, you're wrong. You don't know what you're doing. But every time I've done that with Apple, I've looked like a fool. And I'm not going to do it this time. Mm -hmm. like, it's totally ridiculous. Like, you know, it's got time. It's, it we'll all be lucky time, if we but... know one person that has one of these. And God, I hope we do, so we can all try it or whatever. But I already know who I'm going to know that's going to yeah, have this. I think we all do. Four or five years time from now, I think you look back on how you look at this with an entirely different perspective. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, Andy T. Monahan says that removes scalpers in a way. You're yeah. right. There's no reason for Ticketmaster not to want to do that because it just lets, you, lets them couch more people. Like The reason Ticketmaster doesn't like reselling and scalpers is not because they think tickets should be a reasonable price. It's because they don't get a cut of it. Yeah. So there you go. Yep, it's true. If I were Apple, I'd be on the phone to them already. Yep. Uh, Ferrax75 says, People who've tried it say the screens and mixed reality is so good that it's like looking through safety glasses. Yeah. I, I saw late, late last night at like 2 in the morning. I was like, okay, I've done my research. I want to just go see what... People who actually wore the thing mm -hmm. were thinking. So I watched a couple of videos, and they were all just like blown yeah. away, I mean, like I literally can, like speechless about it. I mean, so. I can see that. It's in this, I mean, even just seeing PSVR two with the black and white yeah. external camera was pretty yeah, that amazing. flipped me out yeah. like that. I smiled. To yeah. your point, when that happened for the first time, I cracked a smile. Mm -hmm. Yep. And imagine this. So yeah. it's the future, people. It, it it'll be a different future for all of us, depending upon our means. Mm -hmm. Where are my <laughs> really bionic funny. arms? <laughs> Seriously, I want a bionic leg. Like yeah, I, I might want to all messed up. <laughs> uh, let's see what you guys are saying about this. Otherwise, see, like you guys were kind of quiet about this, but um, uh, Pharaoh Doll says a little bit more expensive than normal. Oh, I'm talking about lotion or something. Non greasy is their whole. Oh, thing. They're it's, a, <laughs> it's a thing about using uh, non keyboard keyboards oh. if you're using if you use a lot of moisturizer you're, it's harder gotcha gotcha um fire native apple will stick up for us lol yeah that's why i said i wouldn't count mm. on it happening <laughs> no um <laughs> yeah you guys aren't saying much about this i'm surprised oh well, it's not relevant to anyone until until it the is price becomes re reasonable for yeah. anyone lower third referring to link to the past no it's late to the party because let's be honest this is yeah. what apple does apple sits back in the cut it watches everybody else try stuff and make mistakes, and then it comes in and perfects it. Yeah. And then right. it makes all the money. They're like, what about this? And you're like, oh. Oh, I didn't thought about it that way. Yeah. Except when it comes to, like, widgets. Yeah. And, like, there's a bunch of stuff that Android did first that took Apple forever to catch up to, and when they did, it's like, there's no new idea here. It's just the same thing Android's had for three years, but you finally put it in iOS. Erebus Jones says, this is a concept that won't take off while it's tethered to a walled garden. What are you talking about? Everything Apple does takes off. I don't yeah. know what you mean. Like, <laughs> it, because it's tethered to the walled garden is why it will do so well, because people love Apple's walled garden. Yeah, millions of people are already in that walled That's garden. That's not what you're getting. You're not getting here. Is that 
Apple services makes more I found this out yesterday or the day before. Apple's services business completely different from their hardware services. Just their services makes more money in a year than Nike and McDonald's combined. Mm -hmm. That's just their services revenue. That's mind boggling. All those people are already in the system, Erebus. They're already in the walled garden and they love the walled garden. You must be an Android user is what I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but that's what I would guess. It'll be, it'll be fine. As, um, long, as long as they can come up with something that people actually want to do. Yeah. Um, the Saber says, with this, corporations can forever F off on coming into the office for work. You're absolutely yeah. right. Like, there's no reason to go into the office if you have one of these. You're there. <laughs> it's like, I mean, Zoom is so crude compared to this. And Zoom has allowed people to work from home. So imagine something like this. Yeah. Well, it's even more seamless. Yeah. So... I know it's very easy to see something like this and see the price and be like, oh, they're insane and they're crazy. And they are for right now. But in a few years time, all the dominoes will start falling into place and it will all make sense. That's what Apple does. And again, they've made me look like an idiot over and over again. I'm not going to let it happen this time. This time I'm getting out ahead of it. I'm going to be at least a little more auspicious on a new tech. This is also the first new tech that they've debuted in eight years, Matt. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, it's a big deal. And they, you know that they think it's a big deal. If this is the first piece of hardware that they're going to debut in eight years, they they have big plans for it. So very interesting to see this in the very early stages. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope I do know somebody that has one so I can give it a try. Because I don't think at Apple stores they're going to let you put on a headset. With, I would think not. Post-COVID, it seems like stuff like that is just over now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't know where, where most of us will get to try it. Hopefully, we all have a really rich friend who's an Apple fanboy who will buy one so we can all give it a go. But um, I do think it's an auspicious debut. I think the negativity around it is pretty much 100% focused on the price. And I do get that because mm -hmm. it's outrageous. Like, who's going to spend... $3,500 for something you put on your freaking head. Like, I get it. Uh, but that's not the way it's going to be forever. And I think over time... You see the price of hats. Of what? Hats. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm sure Kim Kardashian is... Oh, yeah, her hats are a couple... Hat. She probably does have hats that are worth more than $3,500. Yeah. And that's pathetic. I just would add. Uh, okay, we actually had one more topic, but we've ran out of time. So we're going to have to push that till next Tuesday. Um, I've been playing Amnesia the Bunker. In fact, I finished Amnesia the Bunker... Um, but we don't have enough time to get to it, so that'll be in next week's show. And because of that, it's time for... Alright, it's time for Name That Game, where I show you five screenshots from a video game, and you try to guess the name of the game before this guy. Um, a couple rules before we get going. If you've won this year, do not play. You can only win once per year. If you're not a PC gamer or you don't know someone who's a PC gamer, do not play because you win a game if you win this, but all the codes are for PC. So don't do it. Um, don't play at all. And what's the third one? I always forget the third one. Third rule. What was, don't what play you? if you've won. PC only. PC only. <laughs> slow mode. Don't get Slow mode. Wild. That's it. <laughs> it's slow mode. The chat goes into slow mode while we play. You can only put in uh, one message every 60 seconds. Um, so don't spam the chat with just random game titles hoping you get it right, uh, because chances are the next screenshot will come up and you'll know it and you'll type it in and you won't be able to type it in. So uh, make sure that you make your guesses count. We did pretty good last week, Matt. We got to what, was it four? The fourth screenshot last I week? I think so, yeah. That's, that's rare for me. That doesn't happen very often. Um, and I, my goal is that you guys get it on the fourth or the fifth one. And I just showed you how much I fail at this. but. This one, I think it'll make it to the third screenshot. That's my guess. We'll see how it goes. Are you ready, Matt? Yeah. Are you guys ready? Here is the first screenshot. I'm not sure it's grass. It's grass. Do you know what grass it is? That's always the question. People get it from this all the time. No guesses. Everyone's like, <laughs> they're like, oh, Shane scared me off with the slow mode. You guys get it from this a lot of times, though. Two Worlds 2, Diablo 2, no, no. Hunter Call of the Wild, no, but that's a good guess. Enslaved, no. Red Dead Redemption 2, no. Flower, no. No, too realistic for Flower. Well, he's already won, so he's right. cracking a joke. That was from Sneaky. Lawnmower Simulator <laughs> 3, no. <laughs> 
MGS4? No, but that's a good guess. Yeah, House Flipper. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, okay, I think that's it. That's a tough one. It would be hard to get it from that mm-hmm. one. All right, here comes screenshot number two. More clues there. Hmm. Kind of looks like Forspoken. Not Forspoken, but not a bad guess. Diablo 4, no. The Last Guardian, no. Just Cause 4, no. The Witcher 3, no. That's a good guess. I would have known The Witcher 3. You would, yeah, you definitely would have known it. <laughs> Pressure Wash Simulator, nope. <laughs> Immortals Phoenix Rising, no, but that's also a good guess. Dishonored 2, no. Any more guesses? Tomb Raider, no. Dishonored, no. That's a good one, too. That's a good guess, Justin. All right, it's looking like we're going to make it to the third screenshot. And I haven't been cagey with these, either. I haven't done anything different than I normally do. Lawnmower Sim, I haven't won. Oh, I thought you had one, Sneaky. It's not Lawnmower Sim. All right, here comes the third one. Here it is. Elden Ring, no, but I could see where you might think it's Elden Ring. Hmm. Matt, I thought you would get it from this one. Plague Tale. No, that's another good guess, though, because of that sepia-like coloring. Yeah. yeah. Battlefield 3, no. Alan Wake, no. Dragon's Dogma, no. I could see where you might think I might pull that one out, though. Firewatch, no, but that's a good one. Microsoft Flight Simulator, no. <laughs> Evil Within, no. Wow, I have two good weeks in a row here. I think we might make it to the fourth image for two weeks in a row. Hellblade, no. Oh, right. Uh, hmm. Sekiro, yeah. no. Yeah, I don't recognize it. <laughs> There's 50 Cent blood in the sand, nope. There always is. Not this week. Some week it will be. No Body Harvest guest this week. Hybrid Heaven, no. There it is. <laughs> I, I wish Hybrid Heaven looked that good. All right. I think we're going to the fourth image. An Uncharted Territory. <laughs> Here it is. I mean, big clues there. What is it? Lost Odyssey, no. Oh, Emperor won. Emperor, that would suck if I used Body Harvest now that you've already won. Yeah. <laughs> that would be really dirty of me. Dragon's Dogma, no. Someone guessed that already. MGS5, no. Dark Souls 3, no. Is it that um, Kingdoms... Was it... Uh, I know what you're thinking of, but that's not that, it. That, that open world... Yeah. The shit. one that had controversy around yeah. it because the developers were kind of scumbags? Yeah. yeah. That's not it. I know what you're talking about. Hitman, no. Age of Empires 3, no. Dying Light, no. Wow, we make make it to the fifth one. Dying Light Two, no. Chivalry Two. That's no, it's not. No. I could, that's a good guess though. Nope. Oh my gosh, Kingdoms of Amalur. Nope. Kingdoms of Amalur didn't look that good. I think he was trying to guess the name of the game we were talking about. Nah, yeah, it's the, a Kingdom Come Deliverance. That's, that's it. What it was. Yeah, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Yeah. Enslaved, no. Again, someone guessed that already. The Witcher Three, someone guessed that already. Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's not it, but it's a good guess. Wow. I think we're going to the fifth image. And the fifth one's definitely going to give it away. So be ready, guys. Mm. Okay. Sniper whatever number, LOL. (laughs) (laughs) Call of Duty COPD War. (laughs) What? (laughs) For Honor. For Honor, no. Xenoclash, no. All right. We're going to the fifth image. I'm giving myself a round of applause for that. That just doesn't happen. It just does not happen. Okay. Everybody get your fingers on the keyboard because this Assassin, one's... Assassin's Creed 3? You got it. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Matt wins. Name that game. Another round of applause for him. How did you finally get it? Um, I kept thinking the, the previous image kept making me think of Revolutionary War stuff. Yep. 
and I couldn't figure out what that would be, especially in that environment. And then I finally pieced together that those guys aren't medieval peasants. They're like colonial era yeah. people. Yeah. Good job, Matt. You figured it out with deduction eventually. And here was the fifth image. And that would have just Narrative, totally yeah. given it away. Um, I, I was like, I can't show the assassin at any point or no, any part of his obvious. costume or his gear because it immediately gives it away. So I was like, I got to go with environmental stuff. Yep. <laughs> And there you go. It was Assassin's Creed 3. Matt, you've been doing pretty well this year. Is that the fourth time you've won this year, I think? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. You're doing pretty damn good. My least favorite Assassin's Creed. Well done. <laughs> yep. That's why I said I thought you would get it. Because I knew you hated Assassin's Creed 3. I actually love Assassin's Creed 3. I didn't look 3. at it as much as I would have. <laughs> you you're maybe right. You may be right. Uh, so anyway, once again, congratulations to Matt. Sorry, guys. But look, you had four images and almost a fifth to get it, and you didn't, and he did. And so he deserved it. Yep. Great job. Everyone congratulating you in chat, which is awesome. Um, El Guapo says, Remedy is the only dev I can think of that creates games that are all connected in some way. Are there other devs that do this, and is this something that more devs should focus on? Uh, Bungie used to do that. We're doing Q&A, by the way, folks. Yeah. We got some time to do some Q&A here. So. Bungie used to do that. Uh, Pathways into Darkness, Marathon, uh, Myth, and Halo all took place in the same universe until you know Microsoft bought them and it kind of splintered a bit. They still reference Marathon, but that was all this. Bungie used to be all one universe. Mm-hmm. Um, and Has Insomniac done a little bit of that? Um, not really. I, I thought mean, maybe I, with... Fuse, was it Fuse or Fused or whatever? And um, the Xbox exclusive. Was there not crossover between those two games? Fuse and uh, uh, Sunset Overdrive? Yeah. No. I thought there was, maybe. Uh, if there was, I don't remember it. Okay. Capcom, it's not as common as you might think, Capcom though. has, like, little mini-universes, like Street Fighter, Street Fighter and mm. Street Fighter and Darkstalkers and Final Fight and all those things all take place in the same universe. Yep. Um, um, it's not as prevalent as, you, as it should be, I think. I think you could argue that Dino Crisis and Resident Evil take place. <laughs> Maybe you, you, they don't cross over, but it's like, yeah. why not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but you're right; it's something that doesn't happen that often. And Remedy is one that, like, all their games have some element that connects them. There's yeah. connective tissue there. It helps that they don't make a lot of games. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Because <laughs> it's like what two? It's like yeah, like, yeah. Asking like another developer that puts a bunch of stuff out to do something like that, it's a little more demanding. Yeah. Um, yeah, not, not too many others. I, I, it is interesting to me that, um, I don't know if you saw, somebody pointed out that, um, there's like a rubber armor in, uh, Tears of the Kingdom, and the description says that it's an ancient material that no one knows how to make today, which implies that Hyrule is a post-apocalyptic future world, (laughs) which I'm just like, oh, that's interesting. Hmm. It's time for Shane's pain pills. Down the hatch. (laughs) I made it the full three hours for the first time, though. Yeah. So, progress. Yeah, I can't think of any others, really. I mean, everything else is too can't either. Too widespread, really. Yep, I can't either. Um, it's not okay. like the Pixar theory where everybody theorizes, you know, that there's the old Pixar, all the Pixar movies are in the same universe. Yep. Um, okay, Erebus Jones, have you got an out there prediction for the Microsoft Showcase? You guys know what my prediction is going to be. It's the same prediction I've had for the last, like, four Microsoft press events, showcases, whatever, and that is a new Banjo-Kazooie game. A real Banjo-Kazooie game. What about you, Matt? I'm going to just keep guessing that until I get it yeah. right. <laughs> it's going to happen someday. I don't I don't have... I don't, no? I don't think there's going to be anything out there for this. I, I don't either, we'll, honestly. We'll be lucky to get the bare minimum. I, I, uh, because th- they don't need to be out there. They have so many games that they've announced that we haven't seen. Yeah. They need like, to show us the stuff that we know about. Yeah, how about out there? It's going to be like, how about a gameplay demo of Hellblade 2? Yeah. Like, like, like let's go. Let's <laughs> go you want to get nuts? Let's yeah. get nuts. You know? Seriously. I'm right there with you. I feel the same way. Um, Sneaky. Will you be playing AEW Fight Forever? It's a mashup of No Mercy and Def Jam Fight for New York Fighting System. That sounds like the worst afternoon I can imagine right now, so no. Uh, well, no. I mean, it, it basically is it's built by Ukes, and yeah. it uses the old N64 control schemes, which to yeah, me were like the perfect sweet spot between oh, that was complexity spot. and... I, just, I, I have no reason to go back to that. I just think the game looks like garbage. That like, too. That I mean, too. If, it, they finally started releasing some raw gameplay of it. For a long time, there was like two trailers and they hardly showed gameplay it was a lot of live action footage of the actual wrestlers and they cut in like one move or whatever mm-hmm. from the game now there's actual raw gameplay out there i don't know sneaky that game looks like 
ass to me, bro. Yeah, it's, I mean, good for the people that desperately want a good wrestling game for the first time since yeah. the N64, really. Yeah. But, like, not, I don't, I don't, I don't I'll have enough it. connection to that. We'll to play it and we'll it. talk about it on Game Face, but I'm not expecting much. We'll see. I, uh, what do you think of the legacy? What do you think of Sony possibly selling their financial group so they can buy other companies? I don't even know what that means. That's a choice, I guess. I don't know. Um, I mean, what is what's the idea there that they would have to get the capital freed yeah, up to, to buy get the more capital studios? To buy more studio, I I don't know. I don't so basically, you're saying Sony just goes full PlayStation and ditches a lot of its other businesses? S- somewhat. I mean, that might be the smart thing, honestly. Because when was the before. last time you heard somebody say go buy a Sony TV? Yeah, I don't. It's been a long time. The, the, the only department since before HD. The basically. only departments making good choices are PlayStation and Sony Animation. So yeah, yep. Uh, Cinetai, do you think we'll see new pro consoles this gen with better performance um, rather than slim versions with the same performance but cheaper? I initially did not think that there would be mid-console refreshes for this generation, um, primarily because it took so long for them to be able to produce as many that they could sell. But a recent conversation that I had with Michael Pactor has led me to think otherwise. I'm not going to say anything else other than that. I don't know. Maybe. Take that for what it's worth. That's all I'm going to say about it. Um, uh, Schneeky says, I'll try to get you a code. That would be awesome, man. Thank you. Uh, what else we got? What time is it? Oh, we got, we got one minute left. Here it is from Emperor Dread. I think Starfield looks like it's going to be a huge letdown. How about you guys? No, you're no. wrong. It's going to be awesome because it's on my fantasy team. It looks like, <laughs> I mean... It might be a letdown in the Metacritic, but I, I, it looks too much like the kind of game I want for it to be much that much of a letdown yeah. to me. Like, even just that leaked controller, like, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, I love that aesthetic. I love the look of it. I, I love hope it's the, real. I love what they're going for. It looks too good to be re- not real. Well, they're saying, they said today that they're going to show the new controller at... Yeah. the press event so. i definitely want that controller but i it's love the dope. rainbow on i like the 70s kind of i mean nasa punk i understand how they got to that stupid word yeah from from that controller the aesthetic, <laughs> even the controller yeah, <laughs> yeah. um yeah. no it, it, even if it's janky as fuck it's gonna be too close to like my dream game the thing in my head because like no man's sky was you know like, yeah it's still gonna be entertaining to me it may not be in the game of the year conversation but like no i i look the only way it could be a letdown to me is if it literally doesn't work. Yeah. Like, I ex- I just expect bare functionality <laughs> from, from this, okay? I will, say th- I will say this, that the fact that Microsoft and Xbox allowed Redfall to be released in the state it was in makes me a little nervous. Um, but it also learned a, a really tough lesson. Here's, here's the thing. Um, all the reasons Redfall sucked do not apply to Bethesda no, Softworks. You're, you're right. Because, yeah. A... Everybody knew what that game was because it was announced years ago. Staffing up would not be a problem. They knew what it was supposed to be. They have made games like that before. Like, the problems of Redfall do not apply here. However, if it isn't ready or isn't polished or is going to be a similar sort of launching problem, I would hope that the days of Microsoft standing back and being hands-off with this shit are over and they would step in and say, you got to delay this and polish it up and we're going to wait until next year. Like, if you got to do... I don't want them to do that, but if you got to do that, I think they have to do that because... After Redfall, the elite because again, this is the last chance. Again, yeah. as I said, even people I know who really pay attention to video games that I've talked to do not know what Redfall is. Yeah, no, it didn't hurt anything beyond the very, very core demo. Us, however, Starfield might. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, if it's terrible, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. I think they need to be careful here. Yeah, uh, and they better have something. I hope you're right because <laughs> I oh, fantasy league, whatever, it's not that big a deal. I just want to play a great game. I want to play a great Bethesda game. So. Same. I just think there's a, you know, we, as we talked about during the, the draft, like, I think there's a non-zero chance this is the lowest rated fantasy, first first pick in the it's fantasy possible. draft history. Yeah. Um, it could end up in 6-7 I mean, territory. Six or sevens. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't, that's why I didn't pick it. Yeah. I was like, I, I'm, I want to love it. I want to, I'm very excited about it. It's also a Bethesda game, so. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it, it goes the other way. But, I'm, you know, it could be a disaster. Yeah. And look, I don't think it'd be a disaster forever. I think they'll fix it up. And it'll, you know, by this that time. won't help me, though. No, it won't help the <laughs> fantasy draft. No. That's for sure. Uh, okay, we got to wrap it up there. I see a ton of more questions in there. I'm sorry we can't get to more of them. We're out of time. Uh, before we go, thanks to everyone who showed up live at twitch.tv slash games to watch the show live. You guys make the show better every single week. Uh, so thank you very much. I know a lot of you guys are in Europe. It's like 10 at night or like almost midnight. 
You guys are awesome. We appreciate you guys very much. We also appreciate our patrons very much. Um, and we could definitely use some help there at our Patreon. Head to patreon.com slash sifted. That's S-I-F-T-D. You can pledge whatever you want per month. Even a dollar makes a difference for us. Um, if you're listening to the show on any of the podcast services or you watch it on YouTube, why not at least just drop us a dollar a month just to like as a nod or something like that? It'd be great. We'd really appreciate it. Um, also, don't forget LS Cream. Go buy yourself. Some LS cream, go to creamls.com slash sifted, S-I-F-T-D. Make sure you're using that new URL so we can track the folks who are heading over to check out his awesome liqueur. Um, also, there's tons of other stuff there like drink recipes and you can learn about the, the drink, the cray mass and all that stuff. It's really awesome. Um, and then we'll see you guys as of right now. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. Now, again, all this E3 stuff is happening here, not E3 stuff, over the next like week or so. So... Follow Sifted, if you're not already, on Twitter, at Sifted Games, because if something were to change, that's where we're going to announce it. If you're not a daily driver on our website, which you should be, I don't know why you wouldn't be, but if you're not, follow us on Twitter, because that's where you'll get all the information on what's going on with Game Face and our coverage of Not E3 and all that stuff. So, great episode, Matt. Uh, always great talking games with you. Always great talking games with you guys. We'll see you guys on Tuesday for maybe the best episode of Game Face of the entire year. Game Face is up and out.